we also talk about men that wear uh, high heels and panties and shit like that? Sure. All right. I can't hear it. Alex always gives me that you fucking dummy. I'm not even skinny and white What's up, everybody? This is uh, your host, Noah Robinson. Welcome to All Things Metal. We are going to kick this shit off quick. We are going to hit the ground running. We are going to have a fucking good time. Uh, tonight, our guest is uh, Andrew Holtzbar, badass drummer. We're going to talk to him for quite a while. And a little fun uh, side note here. Once he calls in at uh, around 9 p.m., uh, he will stay on for the remainder of the show. So after the interview, after everything else, We'll be fielding calls. People can call and talk to him. People can call and talk to us. And we have a lot of interesting tough stuff in the news to talk about. So stay tuned. This is All Things Metal. When the dust settles, the only thing living in this world will be metal. <laughs> Uh, we just threw it back to the '90s, there, didn't we, dude? What's up, man? Did you uh, survive the uh, the monsoon today? Oh, good grief, man! I I was really worried about uh, what the interwebs connection was gonna do for us tonight. That same that shit was crazy, wasn't it? We, yeah, it, I, remember, those, I remember uh, I looked at the weather, and they even said, "Oh no, gonna be some clouds, maybe a little bit of wind. Don't worry about it." Yeah. Now we those, had, uh, outside eight, of no, Oklahoma that don't know about 8 a.m. between 7:30 and 8 a.m. The entire metro, which all the way up uh, north of Oklahoma City and like Edmond and Guthrie, 
all the way south into sub suburbs like Norman and Moore, east and west. So it's probably a 30 or 40 mile circumference area. Yeah. Just got hammered with crap loads of rain <laughs> for three hours. Uh, one area, an area called the village, got five hours of rain. I mean, it just was five insane. inches of rain. Five inches of rain. Yeah, five yeah. inches of rain. In, we, in got, what, we got in, three inches like, of rain here in three hours. In three crazy, hours. Crazy, crazy, crazy rain today. That's but insane. nobody called to uh, talk about the weather. No, they sure didn't. Hey, I got a, I got a question for you. I don't know if you followed up uh, much on this. I, I did for obvious reasons. Um, but uh, the poll that we were running last week came to an end after the show, Cheater. of course. <laughs> Cheater. After last week's show. But uh, how do you feel? <laughs> Cheater. <laughs> Excuse me. Say say what you will, but how do you feel <laughs> about the the reactions and everybody I, that got involved? I thought it was I, so incredible yeah. how into it everybody got. All, all BS aside, uh, I just was misunderstanding when it, when I thought it was going to end. Obviously, Noah didn't cheat. No, but you know, if if I had known <laughs> that you could fine tune the amount of time that that was on, because when I started it was the following morning, and mm -hmm. so it ran for a full week to the day right, I got you. started it at yeah. where I should have had it set for like six days and you know, blah, blah minutes, whatever. But anyway, I thought that was really, really kick ass. I thought it went over. Well, that was a good tester. We're going to a lot of fun. Uh, uh, I, I would have liked to see more. We had a couple of posts where people put their version, their fantasy team, their fantasy band. Yeah, I'd like so to I'd see more seen a few of those, but for the very first poll, we're what five weeks, six, five and a half weeks since we, created a page and announced podcast yeah. into this thing and to get the reaction and the um, build up that it did and the involvement that it did. I thought it was awesome. I, I, I want to do it again and oh, I can't I, wait to do it. Again. I couldn't, I couldn't agree more, man. And more things, not just a fantasy team. We can come up with a million things, best guitar player, best bass player, best drummer, yep. best package tour. I mean, there's a million things we've already talked about. We'll, uh, I think, I, I think a fun next one would be, and you guys chime in on this on the comments, chime in on this on our page. I think a fun one to do next would be a fantasy tour. Bands you would put together, Ooh. current, former, existing, not existing, five bands, a five-band package, who would headline, who would open, fill in in the yeah. middle. Yeah. I think that'd be right. That, that's actually a good one. Uh, so, yeah, if you guys are listening out there, go to the uh, All Things Metal Community Outreach. Somebody start that. Hey, also, we now have Twitter and Instagram. Um, the links are on our Facebook now. There's a post, but uh, if you've got a pen and paper, want to write this down or grab your phone and go to the other one. On Twitter, we are all, three, all Things Metal 3. We couldn't do All Things Metal podcast because Twitter goes, that's too long. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> anyway, so it's All Things Metal 3. On Twitter and then on Instagram, we are just all things metal podcast, and of course, those are both all ran together. Get on there, uh, find them, like them both, and uh, let's update our social uh, footprint and go from there. Absolutely, back oh, to yeah. you, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> and now, Tim, with the weather, <laughs> hey, uh, traffic, traffic, and weather on the fours, <laughs> right? I, I just wanted to uh, take a second too to give a huge, <clears throat> huge shout out to. All the fans, all the listeners, all the viewers, man, our likes and our follows um, have just shot through the roof, and we couldn't be more excited, and we want to continue to see it grow. So please share uh, the page, click on, uh, or, well, turn it on to new people, obviously, if you've already joined it, then you don't need to click anything, but, um, you know, let other people know about the, about the page and about uh, what we do, and encourage uh, other people to share it in groups. I mean, go to any metal groups that you might be following, uh, things like that, and just kind of spread the word. And I mean, we want this, uh, we want this to be more than just a little silly thing for us, although we're enjoying it being just a little silly thing, but man, if we could make more of it, we would absolutely love that, but we can't do that, um, without you guys. So, and hey, let's, uh, let's get these calls going. You guys, I know a lot of people are nervous about calling in. Don't be. I think a lot okay. of people who watch this show have sat down and had conversations with the two of us. It's the same thing. Call in 620-604-9819. Again, 620-604-9819. Call in. 
doesn't even have to be something we're talking about right now or have talked about. If you've got a topic, call in, open forum, unless we've, you know, except for when we've got our guest on. Yeah. Anytime during the show, you go, well, they're talking about new releases. Who cares? Interrupt Who it. Be a shit. part of the show. Call, call, call into it. And uh, our, uh, our good buddy, Alex, um, God, he's not even listening right now. That's how into the show our producers are. He, he's not even listening. He's on his phone. <laughs> I can hey, see maybe Alex. Maybe he's actually fielding a call. Yeah, right. No, but a Alex, Alex will punch you through. Just tell him what you want to talk about. Yeah, and, anything. I'm and if and if we have a guest on, <laughs> especially if we have a guest on uh, that you're interested in, like tonight, Andrew Holzbar, uh, some other guests coming up, and you want to talk to him, even I swear to God, it's cool. Even if you just want to call and fanboy, fangirl out, call. Please. We'll give you 30 seconds to giggle and scream and blah 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 blah. It's fine. Come in, yeah, call get, in, be a part, be a part we, of this shit. We it's get fun. 30, it's gonna be it's gonna be more fun. Yeah, we get 30 plus minutes, Aaron and I do, with with our guests. They would love to hear from uh, anybody that's a fan of theirs, anything like that. So we're gonna try gonna, to in the future keep our guests on past the interview portion as well, yep. so that people can call in and talk to them. Or I'm we gonna, gonna interject John uh, Halliday the third on the Facebook comments. Yes, I, the thought is is a five band tour package that you would have loved to have seen. Uh, yeah, we've oh, got that's, a call. That's, caller, that's what's up? Idea. Who is Do we this? We already have a caller. <laughs> this thing's going. Uh, am I on? Do we have a? Yeah, who is this? Hey, this is your good buddy Jeremy Davis. Dude. Dr. J Bo. <laughs> Dr. J, what's up, buddy? <laughs> what do you want to talk about? Nothing. Man, uh, really, I'm bringing it up. It's been on the kick-ass all things metal discussion board. You know, if everybody listening, if you're not on there yet, get on there because we have some awesome conversations on there. Yes, we do. But we were talking about it earlier, and I, I wanted to, you know, bring it up on the air. Uh, so as I lay dying, you know, historically they, they've they been a big influence on me, especially the Oceans Between Us album. Fucking killer shit. Sure. But, um, you know, been Tim Lambesis, as you guys know, uh, went to prison for hiring a, or trying to hire a dude to kill his wife, you know, and served his time, you know, did all of that, got out. Uh, earlier this week, they uh, released a, uh, the band did, as they lay dying, released a teaser, you know, for uh, some new music that'll be released tomorrow. You know, there's speculation if it's, uh, it's the original band. It's already and, out, you know, by the way, but. Oh, is it? Because see, oh, if man. you think about it, it's already Friday in Japan, but go ahead. Go ah, ahead. you're right. You're right. Yeah, so they released but, uh, it streaming. You can find it streaming uh, via uh, J Japanese iTunes. Anyway, something. What, go ahead. I, I may cut yeah, you off. What is, what is your take on this, Jeremy? What What are you uh, – how do you feel about all this? I'm kind of on the fence because, uh, like I said, historically they've been a big influence on me. But at the same time, can you forgive this guy? You know, can you support this guy for, you know, I mean, he tried to kill his wife. Yeah. Is can, that can, forgivable? Can I hit some bullet points on this for those who might not be up to speed or went, oh, what happened with that? Because this was going to be part of news. So real quick, I'm going to hit some bullet points. Um, Lambesis re was released at the end of 2016, which was right at two years after a felony charge of solicitation of murder to kill his then, his then wife, who's they're now divorced. Two years. Um, Two years. He has. He gets two years for this. I have some other thoughts. I have some other thoughts. But let's let's just hit all the bullet points. Okay. Uh, Jordan Mancino, the drummer, SLA dying drummer, came out later that year and said, "Hey man, I got no ill will about it." Mind you, this was a Christian, Christian band. Yep. Anyway, um, and then recently, uh, Nick Hempa, the guitar player, has also came out and had a bit of a change of heart, and you know, maybe I you know I think I could forgive him. Yada yada yada. Song that dropped, uh, God, it hasn't even been maybe three or four hours ago is when it dropped. Um, if you go to, I think it's Metal Injection, you can find the stream. It's a pretty crappy quality stream because obviously this guy found it, pirated it somehow. The DB levels are pretty bad, but you can hear it and get the gist of it. Uh, the song is called My Own Grave. I didn't listen to it very much of it because I had a lot going on. I'm going to listen to it when I clear ahead and lots of time tomorrow. Um, so okay, well, okay, so we've we've covered all the points. This is uh, now we're to hear. A, what kind of a what kind of a prison sentence did he really get? If he's been in communication with these guys, he's obviously 
been able to sing and do things to keep his chops up and been allowed to write. This thing is full on production. Maybe they got it done in 10 days, whatever. I kind of call bullshit. Well, Regardless, like you said, the dude tried to hire someone to kill his wife. Is yeah, he here, sorry or is he sorry that he got caught? Here, Well, and here's, here's, here's my opinion real quick, Jeremy. Give me just one second here is um, – I'll take your time. This, it's it's one thing to hate somebody so much that you wish they're dead, which we have all felt that way about someone in our lives. You can deny it to the grave, but it's true. It's one thing to feel that way about somebody. It's another thing to act on it. And he didn't. He didn't. You know, he didn't personally act on it, but he acted on it, knowing what the outcome would have been had it been successful which in my opinion is the same thing. If he had put a gun to her head and pulled the trigger and it misfired and she's still alive, to me that's no fucking different. Well, had he done that, would he have gotten two years or would, have, would he have gotten a lot more? But uh, my second point is, um, I, man, I can't, I can't get behind it. I cannot support him. Uh, I cannot uh, listen to their music the same way. I cannot... I can't hear anything that I know that he's on the same way without the the uh, mental picture coming in that I know what he did. You know what I mean? And that doesn't mean that the rest of his guys are wrong for feeling the way that they do because they have a relationship with him that nobody else does. It's different. I understand that. However, if I were in that situation and one of the guys in my band had done something like that, it would take a lot more than two fucking years for me to be okay with being in a room with him without trying to choke him out. You know what I mean? I, uh, I very much agree with you on that. Uh, yeah, someone you're hey, close to does something unforgivable like that. It, yeah, it it it's hard to uh, to forgive them. Let, uh, let me interject impossible. another thought. I'm sorry, Jeremy. One more thought. The fact, right or wrong, fair or not, I don't care. The fact that they carried themselves and built themselves and carried the torch as a Christian band. Yes, a whole as another set of rules. Yeah, a set and, of rules that you signed up for by coming out and saying, "Hey, we're a Christian band." Yeah, pe people are watching you and holding I, I, you to a yes. higher expectation than they hold greasy old fat fucks like me and Aaron. As they, they're they should. holding you to a higher expectation because you have announced to the world that you are to be held to a higher expectation. Yeah. Hey, we so we've not, cut not Jeremy's. Not, I was not gonna say we've cut Jeremy's thought off twice too. So we yeah, we have. Go ahead, Jeremy. Oh no, you you guys are fine. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, dude did two. It was a six-year sentence that he had. And he did two years of it. Come on, he hasn't been punished for that. No. Uh, so yeah, I'm kind of on the on the same page. You can't really support that guy, and I feel bad for the rest of his guys. And I can't say, well, I'd love to support the band, you know, just not him because. I mean, Woven Work was the band that they uh, did, that you know, with a different yeah. singer. And, I mean, I didn't really get behind that either, so I don't know. Maybe I'm a shitty fan. No, but <laughs> it was uh, – Woven Wool is uh, As I Lay Dying and the singer of <laughs> – Woven Wool, hang on. Bear with me. I'll tell you who he – go ahead. on you, buddy. <laughs> hey, Jeremy. Oh, so I can't think of his name. Jeremy, I hate, I hate to cut you off, brother, but uh... – we are obviously – this is going to generate a lot of calls, so we're going to get in on another yeah. call. Thank you for starting this fire, brother. This yeah, is, good call. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, this is a very good call. Hey, topic. thanks, guys. I keep listening. Thanks for calling in, buddy. Anytime. Aaron. Yes, sir. What are you talking to your phone about? Woven War? Are you trying to find Woven out? Woven War. Woven War. I, I can't remember uh, – all of a sudden I can't think of the band that that singer is from. Uh, I'm looking it up now. I liked Woven War. Um man, I to me to me another another downside to this was when when uh when he went through all this shit and committed to do this, he not only gave metal a bad rep, which already has a bad rep in the public eye, so to speak, yeah. but he gave Christian metal a bad rep. Which Oh Sleeper. Singer from Oh Sleeper, remaining okay. members of As I Lay Dying. But you you understand what I'm saying? Like that, to me, Christian metal, uh, it, Christian and metal, that, that's been a fight that's been going on, yeah. to, you know, since the dawn of metal. Chris, Christians have had no place, and a lot of people feel that way. I disagree, but they have to fight a lot 
more of a difficult battle than just the average everyday metal fan. You know, this is a topic that we've uh, been discussing for quite a while. Yeah. Uh, the relationship of religion, be it yeah. far right wing Christian or all the way to the other in black metal. Uh, we're going to have to d dedicate a show pretty damn soon to this topic and the I relationship agree. of religion and the genre of metal, the, the, with all the subgenres underneath it that metal is, because nothing else other than the relationship of super Christian right wing stuff and um, country music, nothing else has this. No, no, but, you're absolutely uh, I believe we have another caller on the line. Caller, Who's go there? ahead. Who is this? Uh, this is Sean Twyman. Hey, what's Sean! up, man? How are you, sir? Doing good. What's up, Noah? How you doing, baby girl? Doing good, man. Doing good. So, uh, I obviously wanted to hear what you guys had to say about the whole Tim, Tim Lee Beaches thing. Uh, I'm with you guys. I kind of feel like, I think Metal Sucks said it best. They, like, they made a post, I don't know if you guys saw it, but um, it was like, this is the last As I Lay post that we will make. And their point was pretty, uh, was pretty short and sweet. It was like, uh, if uh, Harvey Weinstein was released from jail five years later, would you guys be cool with him making another movie just as if Bill Cosby was released three years later? Would you still support him if he tried to start another sitcom? You know what I mean? Uh, you yeah. said it perfectly. I was just thinking that as you were getting – I was just thinking as you were getting into this, holy crap, this goes right into the hashtag Me Too conversation, but in a different way. Yep. Violence against women is intolerable, whether it's sexual violence – or physical violence, and in this case, Jesus, he wanted to kill her. Yeah. That's yeah. the worst. That's, that's the worst. I, I, I mean, I my goodness. Thank, thankfully, she, it cool didn't happen. She's able to walk away, but we cannot, as men, tolerate this kind of garbage any longer. No. And we're, we're getting, we're going to get way into maybe topics that I don't know, maybe we should or shouldn't deal with. I don't know. That's not for me to say, but hey, uh, as long, as in terms as it of it being metal, metal. Should, they, should they release music? I don't give a flying fuck if they release it or not. I'm not going to check it out. That's why when I listened to it for a second, I was like, what the fuck are you doing? And I shut it off. And the more I think about it, I'm like, Pfft. yeah, I'm going to give two flying fucks about it because I hope it goes fucking zero and the guy eats a dick. Well, and to me, uh, my opinion about it too, uh, Sean, going on what you were saying, like, uh, you know, if Cosby were released, would we give him a chance? If Weinstein, blah, 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 all these guys like that. Well, I, I don't feel like, he's been released like to me this shows and and music is is therapeutic and metal is therapeutic we all understand that but dude get your fucking life together outside of music and show people that you give a shit about righting the wrongs no, don't just yep. don't just like try to you know what i mean i'm stumbling over my words for the first time since we did this fucking hey, here, here's a thought oh. has the guy come out with a presser or has he come out with a statement ahead of this i think it's in poor poor taste to drop a song before you've come out and said an apology or anything, Actually, or has he? Did I he miss did. it? Am I wrong? He did. He did okay. write an apology from jail, I think it was. Um, and then, uh, from what I read, he opened up a lawsuit against the guys that prescribed him the drugs that he was taking, along with the whatever. Like it's it's all kind of equivalent, in my opinion, to who gives a fuck. Because you did what you did, so do the time. But and, and I agree with you in the aspect that he did nothing, like you know, drug abuse. He could have spoken with people who are struggling with drug abuse. He yeah. could have spoken. He had a pal. Uh, he had a fucking a place, the power to kind of reach out to people who were dealing with drug abuse. He had the power to, to if not speak, but learn about women who are battered, who are, are you know, raped, who are beaten, who are abused in any way, shape, or form, taking his, his, his fame, use that to learn about it, and then come out with a record. But, yeah. you know, it, I think he... I, I, agree he with, I agree with exactly what you're yeah, saying and what Aaron first. saying said that this seems a little bit premature. He should have yeah. openly, publicly done more to right the wrong it seems in bad really bad taste in my well opinion. if he came out and he said something like you said to the effect of it really wasn't me it was all the drugs i was on blah 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 that sounds like an excuse dude own it mm -hmm. at some point we've all dealt with things you know I, I i don't think anybody that knows me doesn't know that there was a time you know that i really struggled with with how much i drank and things 
But yeah, same here. Mistakes I made during those times, I didn't go, well, it was all the booze. No, it was me making the choice to continue to put that shit in my body and make bad decisions. At the end yep. of the day, it's on you, dude. Yep. It's on you. Yep. Yep. And so I think it's not so much the fact that Tim started as a late dying back, and it's not so much that the guys we joined him. If they do what they do, I get it. That's fine. What bums me out is the general public's fascination and excitement. Like, my Facebook feed was ridiculous for people stoked on this new song, and I'm just like, wow. Like, we yeah. are really good about getting voluntary, like, amnesia. You know what I mean? Uh, like, it's yeah. kind of disturbing how people just forget about shit. I, I couldn't hey, agree. Hey, song, the song can be life-changing, uh, you know, world cha dominating, whatever. It can be the breakdown for domination for all I care. Yeah. You know, that's beside the point. How good the song is or is it is beside the damn point here. It has to be. I couldn't agree more. Sean, we love you, dude. Yo. Thank you so much for calling Thanks in. Thanks for being a part, brother. It's good talking to you. No worries. Yes. Later. Later, See you, bud. Hey, we're gonna take a quick break. What do you think, Aaron? We take a yeah, quick break. Yeah, it's time to take a break. I, I do quick really, break. really appreciate the, the interaction. Yes, hell yeah, and let's continue it later too. Um, we're gonna try to get Andrew on the line, uh, and as soon as we come back from our break, hopefully he's on, and uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. Uh, let's go to a quick break. Okay, Atari. Hey, let's three to see two, your Vegas. The Atari video computer system is 20 cartridges with 1,300 game variations you play on your own TV set. You can't keep me in here, Atari. Television tonight. Play it. It's yours. No, I'm My mother said she found it in your closet. I don't know. One of the guys was... Must have what? Look, Dad, it's Where not... did you get it? Dad, Answer it's... me. Who taught you how to do this stuff? You, all right? I learned it by watching you. Parents who use drugs have children who use drugs. All right. Woo-hoo. Who's uh, that handsome I... devil? <laughs> Andrew, uh, can you turn your phone sideways for us, brother? <laughs> and Andrew's got more hair right now between his face and out of his head than I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> All the years put together. Look at that handsome Viking bastard. Hell yeah. How you doing, <laughs> brother? Good, dude. How you guys doing? We're doing really fucking good. Hey, we're glad that you called in when you did, man. And uh, we, we, uh, we haven't told anybody, but this is the first time we're going to try something new here. Andrew is actually participating this week in our ATM draft pick. Boom. You ready? You ready for this, Andrew? Ready. All right, I'll go I'll go first and then let's get Andrew sandwiched in the middle between the uh, all things metal hosts. It's going to be sick. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> My band for the week is <clears throat> hailing from uh overseas. Their name is Extol. They are in my opinion, one of the most underrated metal bands of all time. This is nothing new. These guys have been around since the early 90s. They came up in <clears throat> in Sweden when it was, or no, uh, Norway actually, when it was nothing but uh, black metal bands that were anti-Christian and things like this. And these guys are a Christian black metal band that just literally battled every odd everything was against them to be successful and they are just some of the most incredible musicians very very influential in my life of metal let's give it a listen this song is called uh what is it gift beyond human reach yes this is extolled Dude, I'm not kidding. Some of the most tasteful uh, guitar, like two-part guitar harmonies I've ever heard. Now, I know this video only showcases three of, three of them. Um, this album that this is that this was on their self-title that came out in 2016, I believe. 
was <laughs> it was just these three guys. But their older albums, man, it is. I mean, dude, there's everything from violins to classical, you know. Uh, oh my god, dude, it's it's. I'm um, working on some stuff. Dude, I cannot talk like I cannot say enough good shit about this band. They they are they are the band that got me into black metal. I mean, I did not like anything about black metal, any music I had heard by any black metal bands before this band. And I didn't know that this band was was Christian going in uh, whenever I just heard them and fell in love with them. So I found that out after the fact. I absolutely didn't change my opinion about them. But these guys are just, uh, you know, unfucking believable And they have such a unique style and sound. When you hear them, you can't unhear it. Everything you hear by them, you go, yep, that's them. Yes, that's them. Yes, that's them. Andrew, have you ever heard of these guys? Yeah. Uh, so, I, I mean, I haven't listened to, I'll just be honest, I haven't listened to x in quite some time. Yeah. But uh, I remember specifically um, one of their earlier albums. I mean, how many albums they they've got? Like what, six or seven? Right? They they've got five out right now, and the one the one that put them on the map came out in two thousand. It was called Undeceived, and that that was their big album. That's probably it, because um, I remember hearing one of their earlier um, one of their earlier uh, albums, and I remember yeah. just yeah, same thing like you said, just tasty just tasty stuff all over the place. You know? Some of the like, coolest guitar harmonies too, like they have a very uh, unique way of incorporating like what you visualize when you think of Vikings and when you think of uh, the Norse, you know, uh, mythology and things like that, and you can actually hear it in some of these black metal just like shredding guitar riffs just the way that they progress with chords and right. Two three guitar part. It, it's just it's unbelievable. I love this band to death. One of my yeah, the operatic uh, vocally yeah you know, stuff is just ridiculously impressive. Yes, sure. and they're yeah you're right. And their guitarist Ole, he does all their clean. Uh, well, not all of them. Their uh, their their front man also learned how to do that after he became like a black metal singer. You know, <laughs> doing all that. Then he learned how to sing after the fact because he wanted to be able to do what Ole did. On vocals, so Ole could focus on guitars. He was like, "Well, you shouldn't have to do all this. I, I'm going to help you out." And when he did, th it's hard to tell them apart. He's unbelievably gifted when it comes to that kind of stuff. For sure. Hell yes, Andrew. Sorry, I'm, I'm still trying to reposition this here, but I'm listening. I'm totally listening. <laughs> hey, can we get into yours, buddy? What do you got? You got you got a draft pick for us this week? Yeah. So. Um... So the band uh, that I wanted to pick is actually an Australian band, and um, I'm trying to blank out who I was. Gonna... Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, they're called they're called uh, I Valiance, and um, yeah, basically uh, I heard about these guys um, just kind of surfing around, but then um, it was kind of a cool connection because. Uh, when I uh, went over to Europe with Oceano, we were touring with another Australian band called Make Them Suffer. Yeah. And uh, those guys basically, um, like, a couple of the dudes were wearing, like, I Valiant shirts. And I go, hey, dude, I've heard of, the, you know, that band. And they go, they go, oh, yeah, these are our buddies. You know, we were just playing. We were just touring with them. And uh, I'm like, dude, fucking they're sick, you know. And um, so it was cool. You know, we made the connection there and we talked about them more and then uh, a couple of years later um we were i was touring out here here in the u.s with Oceano and uh another australian band called aversions crown yep. uh, was touring with us and sure enough um one day i randomly was like playing them or something and the singer for aversions crown mark he he goes he goes he goes oh shit i didn't know you like i valiance and i'm like yeah and uh, he goes, dude, I used to sing in that band. And um, oh so no shit, I didn't know that. Cool. Yeah, so then made another connection with that. And he still kind of messes around with them, and, and you know, like they released uh, a little EP not too long ago, and he did he did some vocals on it. And yeah, I mean, just well, let's like hear a little, little bit of it, shall we? Yeah, little connections here and there, but uh, they're they're ripping. Wait, Eric, let's hear this. Yeah. 
That is brutal. It's heavy. Yeah, it's heavy. I like the timing differences between uh, vocal, guitar, and drums were all kind of a little bit different. Um, it almost had a tribally kind of drum thing at the very, very beginning of that clip. That was yeah. kind of cool. I agree. I agree. Um, that's, you know, something that's kind of drawn me in because it was a little different than the norm. You know, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of that anyway. So anytime you bring that shit in, it's like. Oh yeah, you know, like. Oh yeah, change it up. How many how many records do these guys have so far? Um, they have. Well, they basically they have like one. Uh, they do a lot of singles though, too, don't they? Yeah, they do a lot of singles. So they have one like solid EP, and then, uh, and then they did, and then they've done a couple singles, and then they did like a, a four songer that dropped last year. So, I mean, short short stuff, but obviously effective and yeah material. sure are they are they fairly new yeah i mean they've been around i'm pretty sure since like 2012 ish um somewhere around there okay i think maybe 2011 um from what i know they haven't come out here yet so i mean obviously you know that'd be cool to get them out here at some point like whoever brings them out you know i'm sure Amer <laughs> so american fans Go buy their shit, get on iTunes Radio, Spotify, like yeah. their stuff, download their stuff, build their American fan base, and let's get them here. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Aaron, you got a you got a pretty high bar set, uh That's all right, I got this. So yeah. mine it's a five piece metal core, groove metal, whatever you want to call it, band hailing from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Unfortunately, these guys are no more. Yes. Uh, I was outside mowing a couple weeks ago doing shit outside, earbuds in, and this comes on playlist I'm listening to. And I was like, oh, I hate that these guys are gone. Uh, this band was formed in 1999 in Philadelphia. And if everybody knows, this is at the heyday, the beginning of this type of music, the beginning of this genre. Uh, these guys, Shadows Fall, Lamb of God, Chimera, all these bands were just starting to break into this involvement of th thrashy heaviness. I would have liked to have seen them go further, for sure. I would have, too. I don't know why they weren't bigger than they are. This song is from uh, their first big release. This is Vulture from A Life Once Lost. Check shit. it out. Oh, yeah. I can yeah, promise yeah. you one thing. I will haunt you till you die. Oh, Ghost yeah. the first. <laughs> I would like to have your favor, but I could, I'd could. i rather choose death. I mean, great lyrics. Uh, hey, while it's in the back, while we're talking in the background, show the other clip too, uh, if you don't mind, Alex. Um, they kind of broke They kind of broke big when they hit the, their, their next to last release, uh, Iron Gag. That had Devin Townsend on it. Randy Bly was on it. Randy Bly also co-produced it. And he was on this album, too. Randy yes. Bly was on a song called uh, Pain and Panic. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Um, well. These guys, I mean, they did all the things right at the beginning. They start off out of the gates, uh, do a little sub-produced thing, and then they, they signed with Ferret. Ferret pushed them. They toured with everybody. They're great live. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Right at the, the, the Ecstatic Trance Tour, they came through Oklahoma City, and we were supposed to play with them, direct support for them. And, like, five days before the show, we get a call, hey, the uh, Life Once Lost show is not going to happen. Okay, Why? well, here, here no let, me, let, me, let me interject on that real quick. I did see them in Oklahoma City. Um, I don't know if it was that tour that you guys were supposed to be on or not, but I saw them on that tour, and I can tell you it was night and day – um, different from when I saw them like six years previous on tour with like Black Dolly Murder. When I saw them then, they had this really cool stage set up. They had their own lights, you know, that their techs like set up and shit. It was just like, it was really crude, but it was very, very effective and it was very cool. And and their performance was just unbelievable. Shit sounded great. But when I saw them on that ecstatic trance tour uh, or, or at that show, they had the same shitty lights on stage. They <laughs> But half the bulbs were burned out on them. And it was, it was, and it was fucking terrible, fucking terrible. Like a performance was terrible, and I hated that dude. I walked out of there, 
wishing I hadn't gone to that because I wanted to remember them from from back in these days, you know, from the uh -huh. the vulture days and this and that. And I don't know what changed about them. I don't know, you know, I, I can't speculate and I definitely don't want to stir any kind of um, shit about it but right. something well, we've was got a couple we've got a couple comments uh on the facebook saying you know ex explain what happened to him nobody's ever said they just said we're done they like literally then the, okay yeah. so we were supposed to do that show with him and so maybe when you saw him was at the beginning of that tour and we were catching him at the tail end i don't know we just get a call say hey they're not coming it's not happening they're going home i don't know what the fuck happened all i know is at the end of that tour they cancel date or two and ahead of Oklahoma City and some others, and then weeks later, they're done. They just yeah. came out and they just said, we're done. I mean, thanks for everything. Thanks for, you know, 17 years of awesome. We appreciate it, blah, blah, blah. We're calling it a day. And they've never, as far as I know, I've never heard. Somebody knows, put in the comments why. I've never heard why they broke up. I, nah. I hate that they broke up, but they just, and done. You do you know anything still currently being in the in the biz? Have you heard anything? No, I mean, not not, uh, not other than like, I mean, over the last couple of years, I've seen like a couple things like on you know Lambgoat or PRP or whatever, just saying like that like they're recording some new shit, but nothing really other than that. I've seen actually, I did see that they like played some shows on the East Coast. Um, really? So they're yeah. back? I mean, I don't know if you consider that back or if they just messed around but it was like i mean i haven't really seen much since then i mean i don't follow them did they did they build the shows if, if do you know if they build the shows as a life once lost or was it just um i don't know i don't you know what i i don't think that it had all the same guys gotcha they, the, and what, what tell I you mean. another reason I, I brought them up and i made them my pick is like I said, when I when I they came up on the playlist, I was in I got the thing and I looked at their Spotify. Less than five thousand or less than five thousand five hundred followers on Spotify. Right? Yeah. How in the hell and is that possible for and a list, band this, this good? When been, when go bleed this when bleed the sky was first coming up, uh, and we were on the Paradigm record when that was released, we were compared to them as far as they were the <laughs> objective, they were the goal as far as uh, records sold. For a band of that level, that's that's what all our and our reps, everybody at our label, uh, people like that were were saying. Okay, shoot for this. This is what you want. Those guys outsold the Paradigm album on their first record. Um, I think I think like double the amount of records that Paradigm sold, and it sold pretty good. So mm -hmm. I mean, they were they were fucking on their way up. It's not like they didn't have it. You say it, they had it. They yep. had every Every duck was in the perfect line for that band to be crushing and successful, and they had those two albums back to back that were just unbelievably good. I've never seen them on uh, Sounds of the Underground. And, right? Know, Same. Uh, saw oh, there and saw them at Ozfest, and they crushed second stage at Ozfest. Oh my God, yeah. they were so good live back in their day, and I don't know what changed. I think we all agree that we we met we miss you, Life Once Lost. Quit yeah. being yeah. Yeah. live. They boys. were. They kind of almost had a dillinger kind of thing. Now, nobody is as good as Dillinger Live. Nobody goes as ape shit as Dillinger. No. Nope. But they went a lot more ape shit than your typical metalcore band. I yes. guess is what I'm getting at. And you know what? When I saw them that last time, they were kind of just standing there. You Ugh. know what I mean? So something was different. Their vibe, their energy, their performance. Maybe, it's, maybe it was simple burnout and lack of money. Maybe they were like, fuck, I'm tired of playing these shows to 40 people. Yeah, that's very true. I don't well, know. Hey, we're gonna we're gonna get to our guest because we have a guest on here that we haven't even really we do we really talked to. Oh, him. hey, how hey. did you get here? Oh, yes. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, um, this is our good friend uh, Andrew Holspar. Andrew, why don't you tell people a little bit, just really quickly, about who you are, what you do, and uh, why you're on here. Well, my name is Andrew Holsbar, and I'm uh, from Earth. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Yeah, uh, I'm a, a drummer, and uh, I love metal, and I, uh, you know, I'm here to share the experience with you guys and have some fun and drink some beers and kick some ass over the internet. Fuck yeah! Where's uh, where's that drink? Can we hold him up high? 
Yeah, so I'm starting here with the Pacifico. Nice. Cheers to you guys. Oh, Aaron has the saddest beer I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Aaron, yeah, guys, I'm going to have to step off the show. Aaron, I'm going to call Lisa, and I'm going to make this right. I'm going to call your wife okay. right now. Hey, do it on do it on air. It'll be fun. <laughs> Noah, Noah's going to live on the air get me in trouble. Check okay. it out. Hold on. This, Noah, this is... live on the air, Noah's going to make sure that I don't have uh, quality time for at least 10 days. I like that. <laughs> oh no! This will be good. Hold on! Hold on! <laughs> Put on speaker. <laughs> I'm going to just wait. <laughs> you guys, hear that? Okay. Yeah. Oh, for the love of Pete! Shut up, Aaron. <laughs> Making this happen. <laughs> Not answering. She's pissed. Is she at your house right now? Yeah, yeah. she's in the other room. <laughs> God. Damn. Oh, damn oh. it. That was almost Wait, really Wait, do cool. it again. Do it again. Are you serious? Yeah, she never answers on the first call. Are you fucking kidding? Okay. <laughs> it, well, if it does, dude. Hey, by the way, everybody, if you if you guys that uh, don't have your own radio and or internet podcast, this is as professional as it gets. This oh. is professional. <laughs> uh, this is chapter one. We're going we're gonna to have. Phone calls live on the air. <laughs> Great shit. <laughs> This isn't happening, Aaron. Wait a minute. I think she's on the other line. I can hear her. Hang on. But, but I Hang know on. she can see me calling. God, that's it. Well, you tried. Yeah, that's, you know, we tried. That we killed, killed really killed funny. the we whole just, segment. Yeah, we literally just ruined the show, Andrew. I apologize, but this show is not going to be as good as you thought it was going to be. It's all right. Next time I'm in Oklahoma City, you got to bring her out to the gig. So yeah, <laughs> so she can buy us all a beer. Yeah. Right. Exactly. You know that you could have avoided this whole ah. thing. You could have brought one beer into the room, but right no, now you have to buy. Now you have to buy three beers. Exactly. Which really means I, I'm gonna buy three beers. Yeah, that's true. It all comes from your fault. <laughs> like Thanks, babe. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd it go? <laughs> hey, Andrew, why don't you uh? Why don't you talk to us a little bit about your uh, background in metal? What was your first introduction? Uh, give us give us a little bit on how you came to metal when you were younger. Well, um, I mean, I guess uh, it probably would tie in for me to kind of say how it started. Um, but, I mean, I basically started my, my journey more or less with, um, with the alternative side, to, uh, primarily Nirvana. <laughs> Excuse me. And, Same. Uh, yeah, um, really digging it. Um, started learning how to play drums. Started, you know, figuring out how to, you know, play the songs and all that stuff. And then came the double bass pedal, which, yeah. uh, you know, wasn't really uh, too predominant in the in the Nirvana sound, other than you know, like Bleach. Um, so with that, it was kind of like, okay, you know. I'm starting to feel a little bit of a change here is what I want to do. And then, and then, yeah, of course, so, you know, I started listening to Metallica and then I, you know, then I heard Pantera and Fear Factory. It, 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 then from basically Pantera and Metallica, yeah, they were my first kind of technical introduction to metal, but uh, it really all tied it in when I started hearing Three, the three other specific bands, which were Fear Factory, Machine Head, and Sepultura, um, those those three kind of tied tied it all together and really gave me more of a proper introduction to metal. And now, out of out of those, which would you say is probably your biggest influence? Like you can look back from where you are now and say, I would not be doing it without them. Well, I would say. For sure, Machine Head, because I mean they are still my favorite band to this date. So um, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I've always got a special place in my heart for that band, and I mean, shit, there's still things that I do nowadays that I, I, I listen back to that band and go, man, applying that even to something absolutely insanely brutal uh, in this day and age is still fucking awesome. 
and uh, yeah. still has such a unique touch to it. So they Here, are just a skosh away, an eyelash away from doing things that could be brutal. I mean, yeah. don't think that those guys don't sit in that room and Dave and Rob don't just write shit that just would make you go fuck. Oh yeah, I mean, there's without a without a doubt. I mean, those guys, those guys could write anything, really. Yep. You know. Sorry, I got you off your thought. My bad. Yeah, no, no, no. It's cool. Um, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, it was like once I started hearing those three, I just I could not stop listening to, you know, those five bands. And um, and it was just like every day I would just just wanting to get out of school as quick as possible so that I could, you know, immediately turn on you know, my CD player or whatever I had at the time and just, and just dive into it. And well, yeah. Cause nonstop. your music, your, your, your average music class didn't really cover the shit no. that we no. like listening to. <laughs> Hell no. And I mean, I, you know, through all throughout school, I always, you know, did do music class because I just, once I learned how to play drums, I was just so intrigued by, um, playing all the time that I, you know, the fact that I could do it at school, I, you know, I was like, well, shit, I mean, I'm going to take advantage of it. Even though knowing it's not anything heavy or even close to even rock or anything like that, but it, sure. It, but it all play, it all played a factor though. You're learning it all a factor. Cause just, cause I wanted, cause it was just more time for me during the day to be involved with music. But yeah, I mean the, the time that I had to come together to be like, shit, I'm going to put this on, even though I listened to this album like 20 times last night, I'm putting it right back on another 20, you know? And, mm -hmm. and well, uh, and, and the best, I, in my opinion, the worst parts, uh, and you can agree or disagree, but the worst parts about music class um, as a kid and in high school were still more exciting for me than the best parts of any other class that weren't music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like that, totally. that's, that's how you, that's how you know that, it's in, you know, that it's in your soul, that it's part of you. And, you know, I, that was, well, it, you know, it does. I, I will say though that it does, that it does take, it does take a little extra oomph because, you know, obviously some of my closest friends that you all, that you know, that, you know, that I've grown up playing music with all hated that shit, you know, and mm -hmm. would always dog me on it. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it was like, whatever, you know, it's not like, it's not like I was too concerned about it because I knew that my priorities were always leaning towards uh, being in, in, a, in a, you know, a successful metal band. So, sure. you know, whatever, whatever the path I needed to do to, for it, you know, I was just going for it. So. Yeah. So uh, bands aside, uh, what players were your biggest influences? Um, <laughs> and are they all drummers? Were you inspired by guitar players, bass players, vocalists as well? Um, you know, kind of, uh, now I would say actually more so nowadays, I'm, I'm more, um, inspired, um, by guitar players a little bit more. Yeah. And bass players a little bit more nowadays than I was in the past. In the past that, you know, it was really pretty strictly like drum drummers, you know, like this drummer, that drummer, this drummer. Um, but being that I had done like specifically jazz band all through like element or not sorry not elementary but all through middle school and all through high school uh, that also um, there were certain people that kind of turned me on to non metal drummers which uh, definitely played a, a role in like you know my influence as you know as a as a kid um, but yeah I mean as far as like metal drummers like. Obviously, you know, Dave McLean from Machine Head, um, Igor from Sepultura. Uh, I've always loved, and he, I, you know, he's probably pretty underrated, and I highly doubt a lot of people know about him nowadays, but uh, Ken Shulk from Candiria, just oh, so, fuck. so tasty, so creative, um, you know, just a monster. Uh, Dave Colross, he's played in Suffocation, Malevolent Creation, uh, so many other bands. I mean, that guy's an absolute monster as well, too. Uh, who else? Um, you know, I've always been a fan of Thomas of Thomas Hake from Meshuga. You're um, goddamn right. You know? Uh, <laughs> 
But yeah, uh, and then, you know, on the flip side, you know, um, non-metal drummers, I mean, guys like uh, Steve Smith that used to play in, in um, Journey and, and Virgil Donati and, uh, you know, Tony Royster Jr., um, Thomas Lang, you know, I mean, yeah, just, you know, oh, and, well, and obviously Gene Hoogland too, back to the metal side. Oh, um, hell yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, hey, what? Yeah. Those are just like some that are off the top of my head that just I, I I've always I always try to really, uh, you know, grab influence from dudes that are not just like technically badass, because especially nowadays, there's like there's a million drummers that are technically badass out there. And it's awesome that a lot more are getting um, getting exposure and shit like that. But uh, truthfully, you know, a guy that can write a little bit more and you can tell like his brain is just a little bit more wired differently than a guy that's, that can just fucking destroy fucking, uh, you know, 30 second notes on, on, on the kick drum. You know what I mean? Like me, that, that just always carries a little bit farther, um, in the long, in the long run, you know? So. Sure. But yeah, gotta give it up to those dudes for sure. What do you, what do you, what do you think so far has been your, uh, uh, in your career, uh, and it's uh, I, I can I can list off six that off the top of my head you were involved in, and I'm probably missing some. But I mean, you started out in hostility. That was back when you and I met, and Aaron knows Same. you way back yep. in those days too. Then right. you were in Oblige, that was just fucking crushing, and then the Devastated, mm-hmm. which was badass. Impending Doom, you filled in for those dudes. Holy shit! Then mm-hmm. Oceano, which really put Andrew Holtbar, you know on the map like that that was the big one and now you're in my children my bride who's fucking huge you guys are playing you guys are playing warp tour this year so out of take take away the the warp tour that has yet to happen correct what 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 is the date that you guys are playing do you know and then i'll get to my question well say that again what was it the the warp tour date what's the date that you guys are playing warp tour um (laughs) I <laughs> put you on the spot, didn't I? Oh no, we're doing we're doing the entire tour. Oh yeah. shit! I don't when no, but when are the dates for the? Oh, tour? when are the dates? Uh, yeah, it starts uh, on the twenty first out here in California in Pomona, and it ends, I believe, in West Palm Beach, Florida, around like August fifth, something like that. Okay, so obviously you've you've never done anything on quite that scale with that many bands. So aside from that. Uh, Aside from that, up to this point, what would you say was kind of your, as Aaron and I call it, your fucking A moment? The like the moment that you just went, holy shit, this is it, you know? Um, well, I would say it's kind of been a tie um, for a couple things. Uh, I mean, well, growing up, I would say definitely my my fucking A moment was um, when Hostility opened up for Chimera, Fear Factory, and Slipknot all in one show, which was the uh, Jaeger Music Tour in 2005 or four, something like that. Yeah. Um, that was definitely a, a pretty fucking A moment for me right there. And um, I mean, since then, more currently, you know, I mean, going to Europe for the first time was definitely a real fucking A moment for me. Who was that with? Um, that was with Oceano. That was um, in 2015. And uh, that was my first time even just going over there. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that and I'd say the one other was uh, opening up for Superjoint back in the day, which I... Which Hell was, yeah. Which was when they were first popping off. And, uh, you know, that was just fucking awesome. Like, even though, of course, you know, Phil was nowhere to be seen at the time because of... Of course. <laughs> but, uh... We laugh about it, but, yeah, he I, died. I didn't care, you know? <laughs> I mean, it was like, you know, I still have that flyer hanging around and that's, that's all I can say, you know? So. Yeah, for sure. Hey, are you, are you in your kitchen? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, I would, I would sit in my living room, but I, I just don't have a, I just don't have a, like a proper setup, I guess, for my, my iPad and this just works a little better. And well, that I'm closer to the fridge. The fact here. that he cut a lime under the camera. 
Yeah. I saw you do it. No, I haven't, well, I haven't you haven't it. cut it yet? I, I, <laughs> I saw him kind of nonchalantly get the lime, and he's kind of – it's like almost like I'm wondering, can you not reach the knife? Is that the oh, deal? No, no, no. I, I was going uh, to make a mitzelada, and, uh, which I guess I could pretty much make right now while you – Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you don't have to hide shit from me. Hey, Aaron. pan the oh, camera no, no, down, no, no. and you could do a how-to. Heavy metal uh, how-to. And there hey, goes while he's, <laughs> while he's off camera, uh, for those that don't know, some of the bands, which, I, if, correct me if I'm wrong, this is the final year of Warp Tour, correct? Right. Some of the, some, I'm going to hit on some of the bands. First of all, there's 522 bands, I think, on 17 stages. Yeah, that's crazy, right? I mean, um, but some of, the, some, of the, some of the names on this, asking out, and this is in alphabetical order, metal-wise, just metal-wise. Asking right. Alexandria, August Burns Red, um, Chelsea Grin. Um, I'm, I'm going every time I die, uh, a band that is one of no one I's favorite. Um, still going, uh, Hate Breed, the mighty fucking Hate Breed, Ice Nine Kills, um, da -da 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 -da, Motionless Wife, your band, My Children, My Bride. Necrogoblicon. Uh, oh, Necrogoblicon. Hell yeah. Um, I know they're not metal, but this band inspired a lot of metal bands, and I can't believe they're still doing the Mighty Pennywise. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, fucking Under Oath. Unearth. Aaron, Aaron, unearth. Aaron. Great band. I mean, shit. You, it's, can't name, you can't name them all, Aaron. There's I know. No it just, but it's ridiculous. I and mean, I just touched on some of our favorites. It's ridiculous what this lineup is. Insane. Do we have a Do we have a caller? Who's calling in? Yeah, what's up? What's going on? Who's this? Hey. This is uh, Jerry Lowlife. What? <laughs> <laughs> what's up, Jerry? Andrew just, Andrew just giggling like a little kid. Hell Jay yeah. Law. <laughs> Aaron, Noah, Andrew. Hey, how buddy. you guys doing, man? Hey, buddy. Good, brother. How are you doing? Hear from you. Doing good, doing good. Not too bad. Hey, Just uh, to preface for chilling. those that don't know who this is, this guy is literally every metal band in the world's best fucking friend. No <laughs> shit. Seriously, every band, every agree? band in the world loves you, bro. bro. He, this guy has broken his neck for at least a thousand bands at one point or another. Yeah. How are you, buddy? What? Well, good. I just, I don't forget where I come from. Even down to the point where uh, Andrew had that green kit that he still rocks today. That's At least right. I think he does. Yep. It's in the garage. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, that thing is killer, dude. I love that kit. It's great. Yeah. So what's up, buddy? What were you calling about? Oh, go ahead. Uh, just call the chat. Just say hi to Andrew. Uh, you know, let you guys know I'm still alive, watching, kicking, doing the thing, good. you know? Yeah. Awesome, dude. Can we uh can we look forward to seeing uh in the and I know it's it's probably hard where you're at in your life right now to be able to foresee it, but uh do you have any um any future plans as far as any kind of uh road work or teching? Because dude, you you've you've established yourself as a, a pretty A list uh fucking drum tech. You were Austin's drum tech, you've worked with Andrew, you've worked with you know, so many other bands, Fear Factory, a lot of these. Do you have any uh future stuff coming up? Um, I mean, I've gotten offers to go out and do a couple of shows. Um, it's, if, if, if I do anything, it's going to be like weekend warrior stuff. Um, you know, of course with the job that I'm doing currently, it's going to give me time for, uh, getting some vacation time out. Now, one of yeah. the things I did, uh, wanted to ask too, is like, you know, I'm interested always if Flea the Sky ever does anything, that's for sure. Um, but uh, there's also, you know, those opportunities that might come up and I might, you know, go do a double driver thing here or two if it's there for me, you know. Um, nice. But, you know, as far as that goes, I'm kind of homebound for a little bit, you know, I'm just trying to take care of square one. But I always like to keep in touch with everybody and see how they're doing. And, of course, if anyone ever comes through this city, they're going to have to see me. That's for sure. I'm going to always try to make myself out there, you know. Yeah. But, uh yeah, and, nothing and, other than there's, that. There's, there's nothing wrong with with chilling at home for a little bit, dude. You you work your ass off, bud, and uh, yeah, you you uh, you know you deserve some home time if you ever you know when when you need it. Right. Yeah. Well, and I I never forget where I come from, you know, and yeah, uh, I'm pretty absolutely. proud to be here from Oklahoma and meet all the guys that I've had and 
a lot of you guys have been pretty influenced in my life as well. And that's never going to be forgotten, you know? Hey, we're going to do a show in a handful of weeks, uh, Jerry, uh, well, we're going to talk to uh, guys on, on your side of the business. Uh, would you be interested in joining us and giving your perspective and your expertise and telling a few stories? I Lord knows you got a few stories. Yeah, I'd definitely be interested in that. That would be cool. That would awesome. be an honor. Awesome. Well, Jerry, we love you, buddy. Thanks for calling in. <laughs> yeah, we love you. Every, I'm telling you, you're one of the highest thought of guys in the business. Thanks for uh, Thanks for just being you, brother. You've broken your neck for all of us countless times. We love you for it. Thank you. Thank you guys. Love you guys too. You guys be safe. All right. Cheers, Peace out, dog. Care, <laughs> that was Jerry fucking low life. I did not expect that. <laughs> wow. Holy shit. <laughs> hey, speaking of okay, so speaking of Jerry and and his job as a both a drum tech and a stage manager, you've had some business on that side of it, uh, Andrew. You got any stories? Anything you want to say about that side of the of the job being a tech? Well, Who yeah. are some of the guys you've gone out and teched for? Well, it was really only one person. You guys know him well. Obviously, Austin Diamond. Um, uh, but, yeah, I, um, you know, uh, I had kind of a in-between period um, when the Devastated disbanded. And um, Austin called me and, you know, said, hey, you, you want to try doing this? And at that time, I really... You know, we're just, I was just kind of like, okay, you know, I'm, I guess I'm up for whatever at this point. Um, it wasn't like I stopped playing or, or writing music or anything like that. I just was like, yeah, you know, I kind of just thought, hey, shit, you know, maybe I can get out and network with some people and mm -hmm. whatever. Was it, Go ahead. No, I was going to say, was it hard? Did it make you, I mean, did you find yourself over there while you're watching the show and making sure, okay, nothing's falling, nothing's broken? At the same time, you're going, God damn, I want to play tonight. Yeah, well, I, right in the beginning, actually, to be honest with you, I I, well, I didn't really quite uh, have that feeling. Um, I, I, I more or less was just like, uh, I was just kind of like going with the flow of it and, and like, um, you know, obviously getting to know the Chimera guys, well, the lineup at the time, um, you know, just was just uh, uh, just a... Uh, absolute joy to be around. The dudes were just hilarious, and uh, it was just nonstop bullshitting every day, and fun. And I mean, they, also there was no pressure because it, it wasn't like I. I mean, I was in. I was invested in it, but not like a band member. You know what I mean? So I definitely mm -hmm. there's like a definitely a different feeling from that. <clears throat> um, but after you know, after a couple tours. Um, you know, I started kind of getting, um, like a project going, um, with a couple, with a couple old friends and, um, we, Tony that used to play in hostility with me, right. we, we started a project uh, called Vitiate at the time. And my other good friend, Carl Bensley, who sings for snot, um, we started a project and we were starting to get that going. And then because that was kind of starting to, uh, evolve more and, but I was also still kind of going out on tour teching with Austin I was starting to get more of, more of the itch around then because obviously I, I started having something going for me and it was like well damn like I want to I want to get this on the stage with these guys or or whatever so that that kind of started getting me like feeling it more like damn dude okay I'm ready to get back behind that kit you know what I mean yeah but um for me, you know, I, I don't have the hugest experience teching because it was because it was really only with just you know one band and it was only for a couple of years. But um, uh, but well, I think specifically because I was with you know a guy like Austin, who's obviously a great friend of mine too, is uh, is what you know, and and all the guys in Chimera is what made it so much more enjoyable for me. And yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I think I, I think I lucked out on that situation as far as who I was dealing with. Right. Uh, well, so how, was, how did you how did you get the uh, how did you land the gig with uh, my children, my bride? Well, uh, so with that, um, it was more or less just uh, I became friends with one of the guitar players a couple years back because um, he became roommates with uh 
Manny, who, uh, the, one of the guitar players from Impending Doom. And those guys are, are a little bit closer to me distance-wise than I would say, like, kind of like the Riverside guys or whatever. So, um, so you know, we'd hang a little bit more. Uh, it was easier to connect. And um, My Children, My Bride was kind of on a, a hiatus for a little bit, um, just taking a break from touring and stuff like that. And they had written a record that took them, you know, a little over a year to create and it was put out last year and then it just kind of sparked the interest of like hey let's go out and play some more and uh once that interest came up it was basically just like hey we don't have a drummer you know you want to you want to jam and uh the timing was right because you know i just uh i just you know didn't have anything going on at the time and so now i'm here i i had never talked to you about that like i'm surprised that you and I had never had that discussion. It was just, uh, it was one day I just happened to, to click on your shit and I saw you were the drummer for that band. I'm like, holy shit. I'm like, that's a, that's a pretty, that's a pretty big, uh, a difference in style for one from Oceano, but, uh, it's a pretty, also a pretty big difference in, uh, in appeal and, um, you know, record sales, everything like that. So do you feel like, do you feel like, uh, this band that you're in now, is meeting your needs or is where you foresaw yourself getting or would you rather have kind of stayed more the hostility route you know and just stayed underground like what what is the what is the benefit that you see from being um slow? well i mean i i mean i i I'm, I'm definitely happy you know um playing with the and with the my children with the my children guys um because also like um they're, they're very they're very seasoned and experienced just like me so like we find a real good common ground for what we're doing and um, you know some of those guys have like things going on, on the side too so like it's also allowed me to kind of have some things on the side too so obviously yeah it's like you say like there is a style difference um, but at the same time like I'm working on some stuff uh, one thing specifically I can't quite say yet, but it's going to be extremely heavy. But then I've also got another thing that I'm working on um, that's extremely heavy as well. That Well, I guess I can't really say much about that, too, because we're kind of like building it up. But I have two like really, really, really heavy things going on on the side that are are right up the alley with, you know, the style of Oceano and, and that okay. genre. And so, you know, it's like my my needs right now for like really heavy stuff is like totally being met. And nice. Um, I guess like, that, yeah, that that was my question because my children, my bride doesn't have near of the, I guess, uh, the aggressive attitude that uh, Oceano has, and not to take yeah, away from, and not just, to take away from them. It's just it's just different. It's there. It's just different. Uh, <clears throat> you know, for me you know, playing, playing with the band and, and, you know, we did a tour earlier this year connecting on that part. It, it, I, it all kind of started lining up as far as like, you know, okay, here, here's, you know, this is how it, this is how it's, uh, this is how it's played out. You know what I mean? And, and sure. So yeah, it's like, there is an aggressiveness there. It's just, it's just a little different, but it's not something that, that I don't enjoy, you know, playing fullest. So, um, yeah, I mean, I love it. And like I said, the guys are great. You know, some of them have been friends of mine for a long time and, uh, and everybody's just like on the same level and, you know, I mean, that, that just makes for everything to work better. For sure. Know, hey, Aaron, I, I think you'll agree with me, Aaron. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna cut the interview a little bit short and just kind of trim the fat off some of the other questions here, mainly because we have some other stuff that we want to talk to you about. We want to give yeah. uh, callers a chance to call in. Not saying you, you, yeah, we're going to take a, a quick break, but before we take a break, I, we have two more questions that we wanted to ask you real quick. Yep. Um, and this is my favorite question of the interview here. <laughs> what is your favorite non-metal yes. pleasure? What do you listen to that is 100% in no category of metal that you fucking love? 
That is a huge drink. God. Hey, hey, before we hang up, we've got comment, comments on the Facebook wondering what that is. So you got to break down what you made. But go ahead. Okay. Non-metal. Non-metal guilty pleasure. Right. Yeah, non-metal guilty pleasure. Go. Non-metal non guilty pleasure. All right. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> I, this is going to be good. I can tell by that look on his face. It's I more, it, uh, well, it's just because it's just more current of what I non-guilty pleasure have been enjoying, and that's uh, Travis Scott. Travis Scott. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, I mean, I know he's he's one of those fake auto-tuners, but... Uh, <laughs> but Dude, the, 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 the purpose... The purpose of announcing your guilty pleasures is for us to make fun of you. I hope yeah. you understand and appreciate it. Like, I, dude, mine, I know. I know. mine that I listen to probably almost every day is 21 Pilots. I oh. fucking love them. Those no, guys do no wrong. <laughs> yeah. They're great. I mean, I would say, I mean, they have, they have way more organic talent than Travis Scott does. That's for damn sure. <laughs> but, but you uh, said Travis Scott. That's awesome. But, uh, hey, you know, like, I'll go out on a bike ride and, and I'll fucking pop that shit on and yeah, <laughs> and you I'll, get I'll it lose. gets you. It yeah. Gets you. <laughs> All right, so, now 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 you get redemption. What is uh what is the newest uh metal and try to steer clear of the household names, the Slayers, the Panteras, the Metallicas, the Megadeth. What is the newest <laughs> metal project that you cannot seem to get away from. You might go to the Panteras, you might go to the Metallicas, but what is a new one that you, that, that isn't your draft pick that you keep going back to that you can find here? Um, well, I mean, don't say Travis Scott or we're going to hang up with you. I know. <laughs> That's a tough one. You know, it's funny because I was thinking about it the other day. And I, I thought I had a good one. I mean, there's so many, but um, I would probably have to say, <sighs> um, geez, that's kind of hard now that I'm thinking about it. Um, I would probably have to go with, God, that's, that is a hard one now that I'm thinking about it. Um, I probably have to, I probably have to go with humanity's last breath. Hey, oh, that's hey. that's a canned question, yeah. canned answer, canned right answer. Here, I, I can't even see that. Yeah, you <laughs> see it? Yeah. <laughs> now I see it. <laughs> Dude, no, I, they're the I, shit. I, I we love. We had you. Calais on a couple weeks ago or last week. Uh, oh yeah. god, pimping as fuck. Yeah. yeah, and dude, and and, and uh, I I know you're probably familiar enough with them to know that, and uh, you 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 told me listen to last week's episode, like hearing Cali talk about uh, Booster that writes most of their guitar shit. The way that he writes, he's left-handed. He plays a right-handed guitar. Yeah. It's just, dude, it's some Jimi Hendrix, Kurt Cobain weird shit. But he's playing our style of music like that, and nobody else does that. It's fucking insanely good. Yeah. Hey, let's hit the break real quick and come back and uh, Do shoot it. shit about a few more things. All right. I'm going to step out, but uh, no, I might. Okay, if I'm back, then I'm back. But uh, We're going to talk about how to make a monster michelada. Yes, Sounds we good. are. Hey, we're going to take a quick break. This is All Things Metal. So you want to be a rock star? Well, then get your hands on a Casio CZ101 digital synthesizer with its multi-general MIDI capabilities and dual line of Casio PD sound generators. This isn't just a synthesizer. Oh, no. It's a rocker launcher. Casio digital synthesizers with Casio PD sound. So easy to play. They're rocker launchers. D. Williams talks about Colt 45. There are two rules to remember if you want to have a good time. Rule number one, never run out of Colt 45. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. You want to know why you should keep plenty of Colt 45 on hand? You never know when friends might show up. I don't claim you can have a better time with Colt 45 than without it. But why take chances? The power of Colt 45. It works every time. Man, I don't know about you, Andrew, but uh, that really makes me want to do two things, that last commercial. It makes me want to hang out 
with Lando Calrissian himself, Billy D. Williams, and it makes me want to drink Colt 45. <laughs> Do you agree? Do you agree with both of those? Yeah. Got hey, it. where did where did Aaron go? I just saw his wife walk in. We were trying to call her earlier. I know she can't hear me now. That's bullshit. <laughs> Hey man, Aaron's, so Aaron's wife, where are you? Yeah, so let's let's get the calls going here. We're gonna hang out with Andrew for probably another, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, half hour, two hours, however long the fuck we feel like it. Um our phone number is 620-604-9819. Again, that's 620-604-9819. Anybody who wants to call in, talk to Andrew about anything Andrew has done, or anybody that wants to call in and talk about any topics that we've talked about previous to this. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> hey, mama. <laughs> hey, Andrew, we we talked about something uh, a little bit earlier <laughs> that um, that we've had several people call in about. Um, I'm sure that you're current and that you're aware of the situation, but the resurgence of as I lay dying. Right. Um. What what are what is what is your opinion about that? Knowing what um what he did what he's gone through do you feel like he's uh, done the time that he should be forgiven do you feel like uh you know what what are, what are your thoughts on that whole situation well you know that's a tough one because i i mean i don't really know any of those guys so if i knew if i knew some of them i guess maybe i could give a little bit more closer to the source um but I guess I would have to say that, I mean, there's going to be, okay, there's, my theory is, is there's going to be two ways about it. It's either going to be just total forgiveness on the side of, you know, all those dudes in the band and, and Tim, or it's going to be a money thing. I mean, you that's know, good. nobody had brought up the money thought of it. Uh, maybe that's the whole deal and why the band um, was so quick to do it. Hey, Noah, while you were getting disconnected, and reconnected, Andrew brought up a good point. Maybe, maybe somebody threw a shitload of money at him. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's something we didn't cover. That's a, that's, that's a definitely thought, a possibility. Man. I mean, it's it's like it's like I hate to think that that would that would be an idea that could be a possibility, but I mean, but shit. At this point, there's really no there's really yeah. no reason to exclude it. I mean, considering considering how many bands nowadays have been coming back out of the grave, and there is a good amount that I've heard that are doing it specifically because of money. So. I mean, why not throw that out there as a possibility? Well, you know? I mean, in in that pseudo y Christian y kind of a world, they were they were Lamb of God, they were Machine Head, they were the top of the heap, you know, oh, of yeah. those those metal yeah, core, death core ish kind of bands. Um, but then you threw the Christian slant on top of that, and they were the top of the mountain. They were the guys. So uh, well, maybe yeah, someone in that yeah. world said, "Hey, come on, right." It's um, a good thought. Just, That's a good man, point. my man, and my and my my whole thought too, Andrew, with what we said is, uh, I mean, put put yourself in in that situation of your singer of your band did that. Yeah. You know, I mean, did did what he did, got locked away like he did, served right. his Only time. Only does in two the, in of his justice. five years. Only does yeah, two it, of five years. Do you feel? Do you feel like the punishment fit the crime, or do you feel like? Well, I mean, you know, you know what I mean? Like, cause in my opinion, no, in my opinion, what he did was he put a gun to his wife's head. He pulled the trigger and it didn't kill her. Yeah. I definitely can't agree at all that, you know, he did serve the time of it. I do know that from the only, the only thing that I know uh, of is that, uh, the devastated had re had re, uh, recorded our record up here in Corona, but mixed it down in, in like Oceanside area um, with this guy, Danny Castleman, who was kind of, as I lay dying, kind of go-to guy for a minute. 
and I know there was one point when we had to go over to Tim's house to get something, and I mean, the size of that house was ridiculous. So that dude's got to have some money or come from some money somewhere because, I mean, we're not just talking about a mansion. We're talking about a fucking goddamn estate. Um, this, yeah. This, this thing was out of control. Um, so so has, has, anything, has anything ever surfaced as well about why? I mean, was it a life insurance policy that he was trying to claim? Has any has any positive? I, you know, I don't know. I don't know actually. Aaron, have you heard anything about no, the? No, the uh -uh. and uh, no, I haven't heard anything at all. Um, here's another thought. In terms of him only doing two of five, and now he's able to go back out and make records, and it's already blowing up, which means he's probably about to put some money in his pocket if he hasn't already. There are inner city guys serving ten and twenty year sentences for marijuana. This yeah. guy threatened. This guy threatened to kill his wife. Uh, not, no, no, no! Not only threatened, paid somebody. Oh, yeah, paid yeah, yeah. someone. Hired well, someone. Went to went to solicit someone to pay to kill his wife. Murder. Kill this woman. End her life. Blah blah blah. And we got people in jail for many, many, many more years than two because of a plant. Smoking a joint. Yeah. Because of a plant, let's uh, we're we're gonna get off that. I'm just trying to put it in perspective. Um, I'm not going to uh, try to compare the two, and we're not gonna get into that whole thing. Um, but uh, hey, can can I get onto something kind of more lighthearted and kind of funny? We're we're already on borrowed time, so we're on it. We're we're working for free, so let's have a little bit of fun. Of course, of course. Okay, so this is a story I was gonna do on uh, news last week, and. Uh, I'm gonna kind of. I'm just gonna read it to you, and uh, and then it begs a question. Dude kicked out of Slayer show attempts to swim his way. That's right, swim, swim in the water. As swim in, his as way. As in the water. <laughs> as in the water. Swim his way back into the venue. How far would you be Where willing to go to see Slayer perform one last time? It sounds like a tagline for a bad movie, Detroit Thrash City. But it's a question one fan had to seriously ask, ask himself after being ejected from Slayer's farewell tour when it played Toronto's Budweiser stage Tuesday, May 29th. Apparently, this poor guy gets kicked out. Part of the stage is bordered by, like, water. So he dives in, and he's swimming the whole time. And Scott Ian, <laughs> and Scott Ian's Instagram is who broke this, is <laughs> Getting kicked out, and then somehow Scott watches. Do, 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 guy comes around, blah, blah, blah. Oh, shit, this fucking guy's, he's going in the water. Oh, Throw shit, he's swimming jacket, up over man. there. So it begs the question, <laughs> what is the latest? I got kicked out of this show, and this is what I did to get back in. You have or a fan has from one of your shows, and, and I'll start. Mine is... Uh, the we, we touched base on in episode one or two when uh, my buddy Ed called in about the fans that got uh, got me maced. Literally, yeah. our stage manager Andrew, I'll give you a quick history of it. Uh, our friends had a bus. The ba one of the bands was on the, a gig with us, and we didn't really have a green room, so I was in their bus in the back of it in the lounge, doing my warm up and everything. And uh, stage manager comes on the bus. Hey, it's time to go. We're on, intro goes on in like five. Okay, cool. So I'm coming down, and as I'm coming into the venue, two fans are getting kicked out. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, can you help us? We drove an hour and a half, blah, blah, blah. So I go out of the parking lot with them. We talk security down, and just as we're about to go back in, one of them uh, says, yeah, motherfucker, to the security guy and throws a punch. Security guy, <laughs> security guy is literally the size of a mountain kind of shoves the punch out of the way and grabs the biggest industrial size can of mace you've ever seen him just Crap. and douses this kid and I got it on me and I'm coming in I'm like oh, I've got I got maced we got to run to the bathroom wash up they've got to play the intro like three or four times and I've got to do the show anyway so that's mine do you guys have that's one that, that, that one that one's pretty that one's pretty hard to be fan got kicked out or had fans get kicked out and try to get back in you got a story like that 
Uh, yeah. Well, um, I, 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 I gotta, <laughs> go. I got, I gotta get, I got a good old, old school story. Um, so, uh, I was playing a show a long time ago. It was with hostility, and it was out in a town called Merced, which is out in the Central Valley, California. It's a total middle shit of hole. fucking nowhere. It's a total shithole town, but uh, <clears throat> back then we played a lot of shows out there because it was just another avenue to play other than the Bay or Sacramento. Um, so we were out there a lot, and you know, I would say probably. You know, two, maybe three out of five shows that we'd play out there would be pretty decent. So this was like a metal fest going on. So we went out. It started in the afternoon. We got out there. All the bands parked behind the venue. So they're all they're all parked back there, like six, six or seven bands. And then, you know, everybody else parked around. Anyhow, so there's this old, uh, huge, like, old Cadillac sitting back there parked back there and uh i didn't see the guy pull up but i noticed this kind of this this old white trashy dude that like just you know looked like he was just a local probably just you know floating through not there not there specifically because he wanted to be there so anyhow i see him go in and out of the venue maybe two or three times and um I see him talking to this guy who uh, looked like he like worked for the place. Well, the next thing you know, the guy comes out and he comes out and he's stumbling out and gets it gets into his car. And at the time, he I think he had like repositioned his car so that like so that like, our van was here and his car was like right here. So then, next thing you know, he gets in the car. He gets in the car, and nobody really noticed. No, I don't think really many people were noticing it except for me. And I noticed it, and I'm just like, okay, revs it up, floors it right into our van, but like right in, right in between, uh, right in between the trailer and the, <laughs> and, and, and the back and the back door. Right now, take this, take this into account too. We were sitting in the back, just having some beers in the back of the in, in the back of the van. I got out, and then like a couple minutes later, my friend, my two other friends get out, and they literally got out like I'm not joking, like within three minutes of this whole accident happening. So this guy slams into the back of it. He hit it so hard and so like abruptly that like the the car went up like this and comes back down. And there's a bunch of people standing in the back from bands, and, and they're just like, they're just like, what the hell, what the fuck, you know? And uh, so everybody's like, Dude, get out of the car, and the guy's like, the guy's just like 16 sheets to the wind, doesn't know what's going on. So then this, this other guy, this other guy comes walking over, who I saw talking to earlier, and uh, I'm like, dude, like, fucking call the, call the police right now, you know, and... And this guy's like, and this guy, this other older guy that he had been talking to was like, no, 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 it's fine. You know, don't worry about it. I'm like, what? And everybody's like, what? And like, someone goes, oh yeah, that's the owner. I'm like, wait a second. The owner's what? The owner is this guy up, you know? So, uh, next thing you know, the owner is like trying to distract everybody. And this fucking, uh, this haggard guy get, gets back, gets back in his car. And like, we're like, Pull him, try to pull him out, and he somehow manages his way to get back in the car and starts the car and floors it. And like, there's like three people in front that had like jump out of the way. Guy takes off. We call, you know, we call the cops. They finally come down. They're looking for him. They can't find him. Um, the next thing you know, the the owner takes off on foot, just like runs, just. <laughs> so uh, we're like. Wow, this is really happening, huh? Okay, so, so we just we just you know filed the police report and did what we could do, and then like six months later we got a call that they they picked up the guy on some charge and they're like, hey, you guys want to come down to Merced and uh, testify against him? And we're like, yeah, sure. So we went down to went down there. And wow. Testified. What do I did they get him for like a uh, assault and all that stuff or just DUI? Yeah. 
Yeah, they got they got him for like attempted or well, they got him for assault, and they also got a, they got him for assault and destruction of property, and I think that was it. Was do you own the van or was it a rental? We owned it. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. So. So you had to drive around yeah, that for was... six months with your van all fucked up. Yeah, we had to drive like like yeah half hours back fucking because of that. But. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we've uh, hey we've Andrew, got we got we got a. Yeah, we got a caller. What's up? Who is this? What's up, dude? Who who this? New phone. Who this? Just this girl. It's this girl. Oh, this girl. Would would this be Nick Brower? It indeed would. Oh, man. (laughs) That's my favorite girl. Nick, what's (laughs) happening? Speak on, buddy. So, hey, guys. uh, Fucking great show tonight. Uh, I'm so glad to see. I'm so glad to see uh, Andrew um, on the cast. Holy shit. Uh, Thanks, brother. I'm sure all of you guys have had these moments where you're looking through YouTube and you find something just absolutely musically fucking astounding, right? And you've got to show somebody, okay? Yeah. So back probably last year sometime, and, and, you know, I I don't mean to kind of diverge from Andrew's current project or anything, but literally the the NAM coverage – of Andrew's shit for Oceano was one of those musical moments that just, it just fucked me up, blew my mind. I had to show everybody I fucking knew of this <laughs> dude just absolutely slaughtering. <laughs> yeah. No, that was, that was a blast. I mean, I've been going to Nam for, for fucking years now. Actually, this was the first year that I took off uh, <coughs> all the time just because I didn't really, I didn't really uh, have too much going on, right? The, specifically around the time that I was like, "Oh, you want to go to Nam?" And so I just, I just kind of wanted to take a breather from it this year. But yeah, last year, I kind of had that thought last year, but then when, um, uh, when the company Me Me Audio, shout out to Me Audio, um. Could they, uh, you know, I've been hooked up with them for quite some time now. They they said, hey, you get, you, we're gonna rent a uh, a top of the line rolling kit. You want to come down and just rip some rip some tracks? And I was like, absolutely. So that that was probably one of the the funnest nams I've ever had. Well, I'll tell Hell you yeah. this, bro. It, it was literally one of those moments where, like, I remember firmly, like, whenever I discovered like Steve Vai or to- Tosin Abasi. Or some of these other guys, like seeing Andrew rip the rip the drums, just absolutely slaughter from some of these tracks that I'd found on, you know, on Spotify and YouTube, on, on yeah. you know, on iTunes and stuff, and just seeing them play live, I was like, bullshit, this is triggered, this is fucking, you know, no way, no way. Yeah. And uh, Andrew, you're a stud, my dude. You're thanks, a stud. dude. Much appreciated, dude. Seriously, and. Uh... I hope to do some more shit, you know, in the future in Nam, because I mean, it really is, uh, it really is a, a fun. I mean, it's it's obviously a great thing to go to, especially if you've only been a couple times or you've never been or whatever. But um, but yeah, having that experience there was cool. Funny moment. There was some guy. Well, it's that, very rare that. It's sorry, very what? rare that musicians. It, no, it's just very rare that musicians get together and just say, "Hey, look what I can do," or "Hey, look what I did." And to have a band like Oceano or Oblige, holy shit, Oblige, uh, to have you right. know, somebody like you represented there uh, is, is fucking phenomenal. So fucking big shout out to you, Andrew. Thanks, uh, good to man. see you on the podcast. Love it, dude. Fucking couldn't be more thankful, man. Appreciate it, brother. Hey, real quick while we've got you on, any thoughts on uh, Tim Lambesis? You got like 30 seconds. No, Nick. So – so I've actually got uh, uh, maybe a little bit of a counter view. I don't know. When does somebody deserve, uh, you know, forgiveness? I mean, you know, we look at uh, actors and celebrities that have done some pretty scummy shit, and, and they're in, you know, AAA flicks now, you know. Um, when when does somebody deserve forgiveness? I don't know. Um, it's, that's a question for the ether. You know, I, I just – I don't know. I have to listen to it, and I have to judge the person's – um, their their merits on their merits and and how how much he's literally kneeling down at the altar of forgiveness and uh, I don't know I don't know man yeah I can't draw a hard line okay uh, that's a tough one 
Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, I don't know. Like I said, I think it falls quite a bit in line with the Me Too thing. Uh, The Me Too thing tends to want to deal with the uh, sexual side uh, of uh, abuse and whatnot. But let's not forget, uh, he he wanted to kill this chick. Uh, I don't know why. (laughs) He did. That's, That's the statement right. Right there. He wanted to kill her. He didn't want yeah. to kill himself, yeah. but he wanted he wanted her dead. Yeah. Not 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 dead. not hurt. He didn't want he didn't want yeah. her arm broken. He wanted her dead. Well, and again, I think I think we've all talked about it too, where you know it's one thing to wish death on someone and it's another thing to act on it. So I, I want to point out that I'm a little jealous that Noah has uh Three, two, three different uh, sets he can pop in and out of, and um, I, I get up, I get up, I get up to take a leak, and if I'm not back immediately on time, I get ragged on. Meanwhile, well, Noah literally just went outside to smoke and he pissed in the yard. Yep. Don't tell me you didn't. Get on the level, Aaron. He even, he even, had, the he even had the piss camera out, but hey, you, you saw, you saw how. Hey, he hey, before you finish, wait for. I know Noah, your wife is uh, one of the people that asked, "What is your Michelada recipe, sir?" Oh, okay, all right. So, my Michelada recipe. So you you, you kind of have to dig a little deep to find the specific uh, ingredients. Um, but so how I do it is, I get uh, you get your glass, and you put you put ice in it at first. Then uh, it's crucial that you want to put. A full entire lime in. And okay. I, it might sound like a, a lot, but I promise, by the time you're you've been drinking it, it it does its thing. Anyhow, so you put a full <laughs> you put a full lime. Really, to be honest with you, coating the rim is just uh, that's just that's just getting pretty fancy. That's getting fancy with it. You know what I mean? Which you can do if you're trying, trying to impress your Tinder date or whatnot. But I mean, if you just want to. If you just want to say fuck it, go for it. You get your ice in, squeeze your lime in. The next what comes, there's one actually ingredient that I'm missing right now, but it's not super crucial if you have this next ingredient that I'm about to tell you about. Now this is this is a tough one to find. You, you're basically going to have to go to some type of more than likely Mexi- Mexican market type of thing. Um, but what it's called is it's called you go. Yeah. Hang on. Seasoning what? Seasoning been- sauce. You go. J U. I'm typing this out on our comments. You go. Maggie. Seasoning. Nice sauce. Okay. Next. Now this is basically. How much of that? I usually go one two. You can't um, give away the secrets. Okay, yeah. so you do a you do a you do a two a pour a two second pour, one thousand yeah. one one thousand two. It, it comes out it comes out a lot quicker than. Uh, okay, so this is basically your Mexican version of Worcestershire sauce. Yep. So if you ever if you ever if you if you you know obviously I'm sure you guys have used Worcestershire when you put it out, it drops out a little bit. This does pro- when you when you douse this like that, it does it gives you out probably almost two times as much as one one shake of Worcestershire. So that's why I like... Hey, my, my wife wants to know if that drink is vegan. Yes, sure. Uh, yeah. Just say, I, just say yes. It'll yeah. help me. Yeah. Yes, okay, so is. you go one, two. Yeah. So okay, the, with the lid on... Uh, no, no, no. You pop, you pop the lid. You, you open yep. it. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, so there's that. And um, like I said, there's one other thing, but lately I haven't been doing with it. And uh, my wife's, um, my mother-in-law at, at my at my at her house, which isn't far from here, has this one other ingredient that I use sometimes. But I've been using it lately over there, and I don't see too much of a difference with that. So that's why I'm gonna say this is this is a big one. This is the game changer. Okay. But then another game changer, which comes quickly right after that, is going to be what's called tahine. Oh yes, the chili seasoning. Yeah. So yeah. Taki is the shit. Yeah, this Dude. one's a little bit more the... familiar. Dude, my my favorite drink in the world has 
three things in it: ice, booze, soda. This is like a fucking. This is like a Emerald Lagasse fucking. Hey, tahin <laughs> on tahin on uh, mango is life changing. Try it on watermelon. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What? Right. Anyway. Don't fuck with watermelon. <laughs> hey. You know, yeah. no, this is what happens when you move to the north, north, north side of the metro. Ah. You move to the south, south side of the metro. With all the Mexicans, you learn things. You learn some culture. Up there, you just learn how to shovel cow poo. <laughs> hey, so, real, and, real and quick. And how much George Strait rules. Hey, real quick. Uh, probably knows what's up. Wait, what's we're up, still man? in the uh, middle of this. Tahin. Tahin. And then what? And then, and then basically, you start... Pouring your beer in. Now you pour your beer in, and, <laughs> and right, right before you get to the top. So I, I don't put much. See, that's the thing is like a lot of people douse a lot of tomato <laughs> juice in their in their shit. I don't put much because, like I said, this is gonna, this is gonna darken it up hard. But finally, <laughs> finally, finally to finalize it, you want to get out. And, uh, and I'll, you know, I'll be dissed on a couple people from this, but you just want to get out the Clamato and use this for just a little bit. I'm, I'm talking about, like, okay, this is how big my... This is how big... My, <laughs> you want to put, like, that much in. Like, okay, um, I just I just posted it. And, and that's it, and, and that's it. Hey, real quick, um, I got to point out uh, for those fans that are... Uh, Sports fans, the uh, Washington Capitals just won the Stanley Cup. Oh, uh, uh, Washington Capitals uh, beat uh, the the Vegas Golden Knights uh, tonight by a score of four to three to capture the cup. Uh, congratulations on your very first Alex Stanley Cup. <laughs> uh, Washington Capitals <laughs> and uh, Alex Ovechkin. It's been a long time coming, sir. Congratulations to you. Hey Nick, we want to thank you for calling in, brother. Yeah, we, we love you. Absolutely. Thanks again for calling. In. I need to shout out one new band real quick. Yes, yeah, please do, please out. do. So the new Sky Harbor. I don't know if I. I think Noah has has listened to them a little bit. I'm sure Andrew has probably plugged into them as well. Oh. But the the new Sky Harbor. Um, they just released a new single this last week. Um. It's everything you expect and more. They went a little more heavy. They went a little more light. It's the shit. Uh, check it out. I'm going to add it right now on Spotify for sure. Or Absolutely, that- guys. And once again, fuck yeah, Andrew. Uh, keep on doing your damn thing. I'm super fucking excited to hear what you've got in the future, man. Thank you. Oh, dude, I promise you, like, there's going to be two just seriously catchy fucking brutal records coming out next year. From two different things that I'm involved with, and uh, you're gonna be fucking fired up. I promise. I can't wait, bro. Great show. Uh, fuck yeah. See you, see you guys right. later. Love hey, you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got I got a really quick one, uh, just in case we have another caller uh, that's gonna call in. But before we get to that, one of my favorite stories of Bleed the Sky being on tour involves Andrew, and Andrew. <laughs> You know where I'm going with this, right, buddy? Oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> we were, Aaron, I, I don't know if I've ever told you this, and uh, shit, I don't know if my wife knows this, if, if if some of my closest friends know this. Bleed the Sky is in the Texas fucking panhandle, like Amarillo, Lubbock, yes. Texas area, driving from, you know, New Mexico <laughs> through the panhandle, because there's nothing in the Texas panhandle to play that's worth a shit, to get to like Oklahoma or down towards, you know, the heart of Texas, Dallas area. So we're driving. And when you're on tour and you see a van or a trailer with a trailer, or you see a bus with a trailer, you always, always, always slow down as you're passing them and see who's in there and see if you, Oh, is that Slayer in there? Is that Gojira? Who's in the dude? No bullshit. We go to to pass this van and it's just a white, like a passenger caps, Chevy yeah. typical yeah. caps van. Absolutely. So we pass this van and trailer. And as we get up to the, the driver's side of the trailer or the, the van, we see Mr. Greg Haran, the singer from hostility who we were <laughs> good, good, good friends with. And we lost our shit. We were like, dude, these two vans, it was almost like a chase scene, like vans bumping off each other. Cause we were just so excited. We were like rolling the windows down doing 70, 
pull over, pull over, blah, blah, blah. So we start yelling at each other. He's like, all right, get behind me. There's a rest stop like 10 miles ahead. So we get behind him. We're all like waking, waking the other band members up. And I know, Andrew, you guys are doing the same thing. Like, wake up, bleed the skies right here. So no bullshit. Unscripted. We meet up with hostility on tour, like unscripted. And we pull off to this little rest area that has like one tree, two picnic tables, no bathrooms, nothing like that. Everybody jumps out. And at like 10 a.m., after a brutal night of, you know, partying and raging, doing the metal thing, we literally spin the lids off of like four bottles of whiskey and just start going to town like it was fucking New Year's. You know what I mean? Nice. Like, do you remember that, Andrew? Of course. <laughs> we, didn't give, we didn't give a shit. I mean, what we did give a shit about was making that rest stop our fucking party house. That's for Dude. sure. Dude, that literally was one of my favorite that that was my favorite time of that tour that we were on cuz you guys weren't on the tour with us anything, but that was one of my favorite moments in yeah. metal history and I have never to this day and I and I think you told me you hadn't either. You've never like crossed paths with a band in that manner where you just no, saw I, I, connected I, pull over party it's happening. Yep. No. Absolutely. Never never in that fashion ever. I mean, it's I have, I have definitely um, crossed paths. Uh, like at a gas station or something like that, right? Yeah. I mean, the closest thing was uh, a couple of years ago, Oceano was doing um, a tour with um, Whitechapel and Suicide Silence and Carnifex. And it was kind of funny, but we, we happened to run into uh, Carnifex, like seriously, like five or six times on that tour. At, at different the, gas stations, middle of the night, right? Stations. <laughs> but nothing, nothing like, nothing like the powwow that we had. And, and the thing was, is it was just, it was, it was just more, it was just more random than that. Because like I said, like we were, we were on some like DIY, you know, like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what we were doing, but it was, it was, it was, it was us out there, uh, just, just being, just being, you know, just savage. being dudes, just, yeah, yeah, just having just, fun, man. Just yeah, just having fun, just uh, playing whatever shows we could. Hell you yeah, know, you, guys, you guys were on, on whatever tour you were on, but the fact that it like lined up like that and that like that was so that, that, much fun. That, that's just because that's just because of like our relationship that we built so quickly, so sure. early in our relationship of knowing each other that it was like. That that just made that like so epic, and yeah, I agree, dude. Like, nothing's ever happened like that since then, right? And, and I mean, who knows if it ever will? Because I mean, nowadays it's like, you know, unfortunately, a lot of bands are professional, and, and they and they wouldn't <laughs> just want to take the time at ten. Hey, if we if if I and, ever see you again in that context, I don't give a shit. Oh, I don't. Give We're a gonna do that yet. again. Hey, I think we have a caller real quick, Andrew. Who's on the line? You know what, man? I, th I think we could squeeze one in. We're about we're about done, but uh, we can squeeze one in. Uh, what's your name? Ryan. Oh, let's do this. <laughs> hey, we have a caller. Doing? Who's calling in? This is Ryan. Ryan. What is going on, man? Andrew, you know Ryan. He used to do the the beetle bottle the beetle bop for Bleed the Sky. Oh yeah. Yeah, we did a. Yeah, I did a. I was with you guys for just about six shows with Oblige, and yeah. it was far too short. Far too short. One of the few bands that I, I would, I would kill to see every single time that we played with you guys. Was, still listen to it regularly. Dude, Great no stuff. bullshit, Andrew. Like uh, Ryan, out of all of us, and we all love you guys. I, 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 I remember. I remember. I remember how like sad it was. Like. After just yeah like yeah six shows or whatever just being like shit like for real because I think like after that what were you doing yeah like obliged yeah we were it was kind of the same thing we it was uh we had that did we have that band early we had that band early graves with us right yes right right yeah yeah that was like that was like dude because I remember I was like shit we're we're about to like go continue on for like another like month. And you guys, you guys were just doing those couple dates, and I was, I remember, like, I was talking to one of you guys, like, just, fuck it, dude, just, like, get on the shows, and I don't know. You were talking to me about that. You <laughs> yeah. were trying to convince me, and then, 
Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, dude, Ryan, I, I can't agree more, dude. Like that was just yeah, that was that was a, that was so short but so sweet and so fucking awesome. It was. It was a it left a lasting impression on me. Like say there's I mean, of all the stuff I'll go back and listen to, I go back to that and it was just it's one of those where you sit there and you watch the the band that that's playing, you know, whenever whether they're playing before you or after, but you watch and you're just like, damn it, I want to sound like that tonight. You know what I mean? Like, and it was just always sounded so crisp and so so damn heavy. And yeah. like, yeah. there, everything you guys did was working well. Fuck yeah, man. Well, you know, I mean, dude, like, I always got to give it up for those guys. You know, like Greg Wilburn and and Eric Korea. You know, for being so welcoming to me, like coming into Oblige and, uh, you know, for sticking it out as long as we could with them. And, and, you know, and then, and then, you know, I mean, it was, it, it got, it got a little tough towards the end of that, but then, you know, we turned it around and we fucking, we started busting out the devastated and, you know, it was just, uh, just a whole nother chapter. And that's, you know, that's how you got to do it. Sometimes, you know, you just got to fucking, uh, you just got to fucking, keep keep grinding on it but uh yeah i mean like absolutely dude like you know i uh right hey ryan I, sorry to interrupt mm -hmm. you ryan what was uh what was your favorite tune to watch them play live oh uh, that uh, was a human target practice or flesh yeah, peel practice, practice, like oh, pretty much any of that shit practice. oh uh, yeah <laughs> oh god flesh peel every time they kicked into that Dude, Ryan, Ryan and I would literally just lose our fucking minds watching that. It was so like, good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a violent person, but like if I had to hit shit, that's what I'm listening to. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, you know, it's funny because over the years, like even till even till now, you know, when I'm when I'm out on tour, you know, like when I was on tour with, you know, Oceano and even to fucking like doing even fucking on doing tours with fucking Chimera attacking with them and and even some devastated tours too. You know, I, I was still I would run into people, you know, in the last, you know, seven, eight, nine years that like still like dude, like you know, like that was that was like that was that was a band that was like I forgot who was telling me one time. I can't remember, but somebody was telling me from some some other decent sized band was telling me that like this that like Oblige was like the favorite band of like a lot of these like bigger bands, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, but yet, but yet, like to like just your, you know, regular old scene, it was just oh yeah okay, you know. But yeah, I mean, it, it just like, it again, captured again, the tenacity it was, that isn't there normally, so. Yeah. Hell yeah. No, the, I mean, the, the cool thing was, is like, you know, I was always trying to stay true to what I was doing, especially, you know, growing up and doing hostility. And then when I hooked up with those guys, it was like they were on the same uh, wavelength of doing that. And that's what made me so intrigued and so vibed out because it was just like, fuck, yeah, dude. I mean, well, obviously, I mean, dude, Expectance, like, is one of the best fucking fucking records of that time and still is you know so i mean it was like with that being said it was like dude i'm absolutely fucking honored to just destroy this shit so hey andrew real yeah, quick I mean, question I, yeah are you as drunk as i am buddy uh i can be if you want me to. <laughs> aaron's aaron's officially the babysitter aaron how you feel about that, that that's Aaron's garbage i see ratted. just because i'm the old this doesn't mean I have no, to be it's because you're the most composed and nobody can deny it. Dave, no, 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 you can't Aaron, prove that. Your face looks pretty red, or is, it, or is that a filter? <laughs> Ryan, <laughs> no, that's that it's just yeah. always this color. From uh, the, the my, second the sun, face filter. Second the sun changes from winter to summer in Oklahoma, my face immediately just burns and stays burnt until November. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Hey, Ryan, thanks for calling in, brother. Yeah. We love you. Absolutely. Dude, uh, you guys take it easy. Thanks, brother. I'll call you tomorrow, Ryan. Sounds good. <laughs> what are you, What are you gonna call Ryan about tomorrow? That you hey, that's uh, live on the we're air. Gonna, we're, we've that's got a, that's a, none of your business. None of your business. <laughs> do we have another caller? Who's on the line? Football. We're gonna talk about football. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Will hey. Clark. Uh, play with a band called Blood of the Prophet out of oh, Ohio. Nice. Awesome. Uh, up, man. 
Hey, hey, I'm the drummer for the band here. Um, I was calling in for a uh, crazy uh, metal show story. Um, hopefully I can tell it as uh, as good as, as it was to experience it. Um, you know, we did full United States touring. It was kind of a, it was always a DIY project. And this particular tour, you know, I'll second Andrew's uh, statement. There's something about Texas, man. <laughs> And and kind of oh, is everywhere because yeah. we, we ran into them at a Waffle House. <laughs> but um, <laughs> this, this particular show, we were uh, on a tour with a band called Mobile Death Camp, and it uh, featured uh, Todd used to play in Guar. So we got done with our set, and it was a great set, solid venue. And so we were hanging out by the bar, and uh, my guitar player, a uh, bigger guy, he's about maybe six one, all of about 220, you know, beard, ponytail. He looks like he should be in a Mont Mars. But for whatever reason, I think he was, he was full on cougar bait. <laughs> so we're all sitting at the bar and uh, there's a, an older female that uh, keeps making eyes at him. And, you know, we know she's interested in seeing as we're all DIY, you know, a bunch of, you know, kids. 2021 we just need a place to stay we're encouraging him you know you found a place to girl. stay yeah we were <laughs> we were we were pushing for it man <laughs> and so he's and so he's he's you know kind of get getting in, in it with her and uh he's uh trying to coax her at least in the at least going into the bathroom and giving him a blowjob for <laughs> to, to, <laughs> you know it's kind of like wow. test driving the car before you buy it so flat out you know, she says, I, I don't, I don't normally do that. You know, I'm a lady. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Sure she's you like, are. But, you know, course, yeah, she's you like, <laughs> but if, if you want to come by the house, you know, I'd be more than happy to take care of you there. Yes. So, you guys you know, have a place point, to stay. By the way, do you also have yeah. cereal, bacon, a package of bologna, some socks, a loaf of bread, <laughs> uh, Wash three dryer, fresh towels, uh, and can we do four loads of laundry? Also, never mind, but as you were saying, <laughs> back to your house, right? <laughs> yeah, back to the house. And so he uh, says, uh, well, can my, band, can my band stay too? And she's like, yeah, bring them uh, along. <laughs> so we encourage him. We're like, you know what, dude? Go. You can. We know, we know. We, as being a twin band, you don't ever really want to split up. But we told him, you know, okay, you know, go back with her, get everything situated, and we'll meet you there in about 20 minutes. So... He and this lady leave the venue. About 10 minutes later, uh, one of the bartenders there is a shorter guy. Looks like a miniature. He's, look, he's looking for his wife. He doesn't know where she went, right? <laughs> well, here's the thing. He's flipping over tables and bar stools, right? And he's saying, fucking blood of the prophets, man. Fucking blood of the prophets. If that guy fucks my mom, I'm killing him. I'm killing them all. <laughs> So the bar, so the owner of the bar there is like, if you kill those boys, I'm kicking your ass. <laughs> so, wow. so we have to do, we have to do, you know, operation rescue the guitar player. So we're all trying yeah. to get a hold of him, get on his phone, you know, trying to say, dude, dude, you know, you got to get out of there because this guy is coming to find you. <laughs> you know, he said, he said he's got a shotgun. He's coming to find you. And oh so my God. At, at, at the time my guitar player got this phone call. He was pulling up into the lady's driveway. And so she gets out of the car with her friend and they go uh, to their, their porch. And so he's kind of hanging back. Right. And he's on the phone with us getting all this play by play. And, you know, I can just imagine it. She looked back at him and was like, Hey, you know, you coming inside, you know, for what we talked about, you know, you're going to hey, come in. Let me ask, was she, was and, she hot? <laughs> she aged no, just, well. She kind of This is going to play in mind right now. Right now, when yeah, you're like, she, "Do I die or not?" is she's pretty hot. <laughs> she definitely, she definitely had like a Terry Hatcher thing going on. <laughs> a Harry what? A Terry Hatcher. Terry Hatcher. Hey, if you're Seinfeld fans, <laughs> that's uh, they're real and they're spectacular. And they're spectacular. <laughs> yeah. Okay, go and ahead. So go ahead. So he's on looked, the court. She's getting the play-by-play. Yeah, and so she's looking at him, are you going to come in? He's like, yeah, I uh, I just got to take a look. So he goes to the edge of her lawn, 
and fucking books it. Takes off. Run. And he was saying, you know, every single car that he saw coming down the street, you know, he would jump in the bushes. I felt like everything was moving in slow motion. And, you know, this guy's running around Fort Worth, Texas. This was been our first outing down there. And, uh, you know, we're trying to figure out where he's at. And I remember as we were pulling into town, there was just one billboard that we ever saw. And he said, I'm under the billboard. We knew exactly where he was at. <laughs> so we like, so we rolled up to him, like count and drive by styles and with the doors open. Yeah. He didn't even stop. From behind, right. He jumps from behind a dumpster into the car. We take off. We end up staying with some gypsy girl that we met <laughs> earlier in the night. Right. She makes us pancakes and plays acoustic guitar for us until we fall asleep. And that is our Blood of the Prophets tour story. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> wow. That was yeah. awesome. Well, I'm going to cut you off because I'm not going to lie. Nothing you have to say is as cool as what you just told us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's, hey. All I, that's all I got. Will, do us a favor, continue to call in, because if you can continue to come up with stories like that and and fun shit, holy crap, you got to be on every week, bro. You got to be a part of this regularly. Please call call in again, buddy. I'll have to stay on top of it. I've got one more about my bass player getting almost abducted, and I will save that. I'll save that one for you guys. (laughs) Please. Please. Call back in in on another episode, uh, and we, we would love to hear it. Wow. All right. I'll be thanks for calling, brother. Thanks for being a part of the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Thanks for great music and what you guys are doing and keeping, you know, the whole scene alive and I'm supporting it. it. Word up. You You got it. Take it easy. Hey, did it did anybody else here notice that the (laughs) the video just cut to a spinal tap? (laughs) (laughs) Hey, just let this play don't cut back to us because yeah, it's been in the background us. all night. This Nobody's seen it. That's part of the whole movie. Hey, look, technically, I'm the guitar. Oh, I was the guitar. Hey, yeah, may, right. I, now, now may, I, may I may I say, the, <laughs> arguably, after that story, the comment of the night, all's well that ends in pancakes. Yes, dude. And the gypsy Courtesy. woman failed to mention the entire conversation until the end he said oh yeah and we stayed with this gypsy woman she made us pancakes and played a yeah stuff. and he didn't die so, so dude, you know what? I, you I, dodged I, death I, and then you got pancakes there you go that's like a disney movie <laughs> <laughs> hey we are not that i give a shit but we are way over aaron andrew are you guys still having a good time you guys doing all right yeah, I've got, I, I wanted to take a shot I, with I've you got guys quite a bit of you know, hey, my commute is four feet tomorrow. Oh, well, mine's a little longer than that, but I got plenty of time to sleep. Hey, if you're pouring up a shot, that's exactly what I got in this little girl right here. Okay. Yep. Is that what yeah. you're doing? This one goes out to both you guys. I wouldn't be here without you. <clears throat> Woo! We love you. Thank you Thank so you, much brother. for being part of this, buddy. Hell yes. Ed shared, like shared the uh, family secret recipe of uh, the Michelada. Yeah. In the Holes Bar, the Holes Bar uh, House of Holes Bar. Yeah. I, uh, I figure, you know, like it's something that it's got to be passed on because it's, it's not like uh, some crazy grandma's recipe. I mean, I've been kind of working up my, uh, my kitchen, uh, experience over the last bit here last couple of years and there's a couple of things that i have that I, i'm not quite trying to share but uh i'll tell you dude that take that recipe and just run with it if you want if, if you if you're in the mood for a michelada you know hell yes oh, I, I i as you were doing it i was putting that in the comments so the recipe is do, there can I, do, can I do a shameless plug real quick Oh, of please course. do. Always do. Please do. Oh, oh, he has to leave. It's out in his car. Hey, it's... is that a hamburger helper oven mitt hanging behind him? <laughs> is it what? The, is that wait, a hamburger helper you, oven mitt? Is that a hamburger Mike helper oven mitt? It's, uh... It's it a little hamburger like... helper guy. It's a it's Mickey, Mickey Mouse, dude. It's, it's Mickey a... Mouse. Cause my, cause oh, my... word up. Okay. <laughs> Still pretty great. <laughs> and then, you know, if you want to have a spot of tea, like... You know, Mickey Mouse. Now we got it too here. Nice. <laughs> I got you 
got you covered. I got you covered. All right. Okay, so, what's your shameless plug, brother? So, um, my uh, my brother-in-law up in the Bay Area, my sister's uh, husband, he um, he owns a company that he started a couple years ago called Seven Stills. Uh, when they first started, they were making craft whiskey nice. um, from craft beer. And then they also were doing cra- they were also doing like a craft vodka, but they've started uh, diving into the beer industry in the last couple of years. And their whiskey's killer, their vodka's killer, but their beer is just fucking hitting it out of the park. And so, you know, right now, I don't know how familiar, well, I'm sure you guys, you know, know the the hype on craft beer, obviously, but like... I am a hype- massive craft beer guy. Yeah, so the biggest As hype... is Alex, one of our producers. Yeah, so, so, you know, lately the biggest hype is like canning beer. So they, they've been doing, you know, uh, hype cans and, and monthly releases and stuff like that. And one of the things they did for 420 was they did a, what they call a peach blunt, which is, this nice. is the, Nice. With the, with the Swisher, uh, knockoff logo. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so anyhow, what kind yeah, of beer so, is that? Is that a piece like a peach lager? It is a peach flavored hazy IPA. Ooh. Hey, that's what I was. I was drinking uh, some hazy IPAs all night and a peach hazy I'm IPA. Just, I'm, I'm all about them, man. I, I fucking love them. There's, a, there's another brewery out here. Juicy, called- hoppy. Love them. Yep. You guys know what I was drinking tonight? Because I'm a fucking man. I was drinking whiskey. No, well, that's... I'm drinking beer <laughs> and whiskey. <laughs> it should be. Let's let me, let's see this uh, color after you get it poured. Oh, I'm yeah. gonna get. Aaron. Oh, we're oh at. yeah. Yes, they are unfiltered, as you can was, tell by the little this, floaties. This was it's a little good. clearer than you'd expect the hazy New England IPA to be, though. This was a one-time release, so I mean that's why you that's why you're kind of getting a little bit of that floaty in there. Um, yep. Hey, but, show that can again. I want to point something out at the top of the label. Yeah. Four cans. No, turn it, turn it. Four cans for twenty dollars. Faux for faux twenty. Faux right. for twenty. You. You want to know what this? You want to know what this is? This is twenty-eight cans for twenty bucks. That's what that you is. You know what? I actually have not tried that. Dude, it'll put hair on your sack. Not gonna lie. It comes with it comes with a, a picture of a naked picture of Mira Savino down in the drinking, bottle, like cereal when you got the toy out. out of this, yeah, because she promotes Devil's Cut. Like when you pour the last shot, Mira yep. Savino naked. Hey, I want I want to touch on something Not real Mira quick. Savino, uh, Mila Kunis, Mila Kunis. <clears throat> before before we call it a night here, because uh, this is on record the longest episode, which is badass. Yes. Andrew, we've had well, such a blast with you. Do not hang up. Uh, as soon as we get done with the show, we're going to chat for just a couple minutes, and then we'll let you go. However, um, Aaron and I have uh, made an executive decision. We pushed uh, we pushed next week's guest um, off a week because we feel like we have enough of one discussion topic to take up an entire evening, and we want to dedicate next week's episode strictly to callers um we will get back to having uh having musicians uh guests things like that in future weeks but next week um aaron and i both have discussed the topic enough between us even just over the years not just because of this show we got into it tonight yeah and and we touched on it a little bit tonight but we feel like there's enough um enough subject matter there to carry the show without a guest and we really really hope that we get um enough callers which again the number 620-604-9819 that number will not change so please call in next week um i can i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and hint at it and then we'll do a big we'll do a big promo thing around it too but next week our our topic is going to be religion in metal and it's not we're not talking about Christianity. We're not talking about Satanism. We're not talking about any mythology or ideology. We're talking about all of them. The goods, the bads, the positives, the negatives, everything that religion has to offer in metal. 
as well as political views. There have been a lot of bands that take a very strong political stance. Does it help them? Does it hurt them? This and that. So we really want to, without Aaron and I and any callers taking a firm stance um, on any of these, let's be open-minded, and we really well, want to discuss. Callers can take a stance. I want, we want the callers to take a stance. Well, and callers that, and say your side of it. Noah and I are not going to take a stance. No. Regardless of how we feel, that's a topic for one that's, of these days. If we're at a show and we're doing shots and beers, then we'll get into it. But for the purpose of this show, we're just going to put the topic out there, and we will comment how we feel about you guys' thoughts. Sure. We want to know how you feel, left or right. Um, yeah. And then, and then underneath that can be the the political side of things as well. But no genre, metal. And of course, yes. underneath metal, you've got all these subgenres. But no genre, metal, metal, other than metal, uh, discusses and is as inter intertwined with religion like metal is sure. from the get-go. I mean, the band that arguably invented the genre, Black Sabbath. Yep. Sabbath. Yep. The term Sabbath. And I mean, still, and still to this day, the one, one of the most controversial bands to this day. But again, that, that will be something that we touch on um, next week. So please tune in. Please get your questions ready. If you're a caller, if, if you feel like calling in, you have from now Till next Thursday. We normally don't announce what our topic is and, and uh, what we're going to be doing a week in advance, but we want callers to have plenty of time to develop their argument, their stance, their whatever they want to call in about. We want to have this episode flooded with callers because minus the ATM draft picks uh, that we love doing, there probably will not be a lot of other discussion away aside from this. We want this episode to be based around this one topic so please, right, which also means not. go ahead which also means we're not going to prep a lot so no. if you guys call because if not we're going to be sitting here with nothing to discuss on yes. purpose uh, we want to hear what if you guys say and that doesn't mean just guys all we have is guys calling ladies i know we have a lot of ladies watch this show call in give us your thoughts please. on it uh which side black or or, or white or metal or feet you know yeah. Let's talk about it. I, this is a big, big, big part of metal. Uh, and dude, Aaron, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it nerdy and in old man terms that you and I both understand. This is gonna be the Jedi or Sith discussion. Sure is, absolutely, as it should be. Yep. And 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 I think uh, all three of us here that are the nerdy Star Wars fans that we are agree with points on both sides, as yep. we do with religion and metal. So we're gonna. We're going to keep it lighthearted, but we also want it to be interesting and we want it to be challenging. Convince us, um, challenge us. Uh, again, Aaron and I don't know everything about metal just because we're doing this show. We just happen to love nothing more in our lives more than metal, and that's why we're doing this. So please call in. Please debate. Please challenge. Ask us questions. Don't just call in and say, oh, Satan rules, blah, blah. You know, have have something more substan substantial yeah. than that. Have some have call, some depth call, on, your, on your comment. Tell us why. Tell us why you think uh, religion and, uh, and metal don't mix. <laughs> or tell us why you think it's okay to be that way. Say, hey, this is a great sure. platform for my ministry and for my testament. Yep. Uh, or I hate that shit and I want to shut it down. Either either way, we want to hear all of it because I can tell you right now, I love and I hate bands on both sides. Sure do. And I think we, uh, the three of us on here, I think we can all agree to that. Um, so anyway, with that, with that foundation being laid, please get your uh, your ideas, your discussions ready. Please call in from start to finish next week. The only time we will not be taking calls is during the draft picks, which only takes about 10, 15 minutes. So the rest of the show is up to you guys to make it as good or as bad as it's going to be. You have 165 and a half hours to prep for this. Dude, that's you, a good, that's, that's a good you just you just calculated that on your fucking phone, didn't you? Can you see my phone? <laughs> There's no way you knew that right now. <laughs> there is shut the fuck up. There's no way you did that. Hey, hey, Unagi, Unagi. <laughs> Andrew, thank you so fucking much for joining us tonight. Yes, sir. Dude, like, thank you guys. I yes. Love you. Hey, I'm I'm trying to talk Noah into coming down. Um, July the fifth, you're in yeah, warped. Warped is in Dallas, and uh, I'm already I'm already off Let's that day. Up. 
I'm already off that day. Uh, it would, you know, who knows? We'll get in touch though. Maybe we can. Maybe we can. We'll see. We'll see what we can yeah. do. We have we have a big guest booked for that day too. So we'll have to see how we can work it all and make it all happen. But we would love hey, to see. Hey, you. And hey, do do the podcast from my bus. Fuck it. Shit. Yeah. Oh, I'm doing, no, I'm doing it from your bunk, dude. Do it from my bunk. <laughs> Everybody, thank you so much for your calls. Thanks tonight. for being a part. Hey, the yeah. show really is growing, growing, growing. Yes. Uh, more calls than we've had, more viewers than we've had. We yep. stayed between 15 and uh, 20 or 12 and 20 all night. All night. Never dipped all into night. single um, Badass. I'd be interested to see what the total viewership was. We'll run the numbers. Lots and lots and lots and lots of lots of comments tonight. Uh, lots yep. of real-time stuff, discussion going on. And... A Michelada recipe. <laughs> Michelada recipe. That you'll there never we go, forget. man. And you know Hell what? Yeah. You can tell Andrew. that to grandkids, grandkids, grandkids. There you go, buddy. Andrew, <laughs> we love you. Thank you again for being yeah, on brother. here. And, love uh, you guys, sir. man. Bye. Hey, go you kill guys. it on Warp this summer. Seriously. Yeah. Congrats. Go do what you do, and you'll be, the, you'll, you'll be the man. Everybody will be like, Whoo, that drummer for My Children, My Bride was kicking <laughs> ass. Hell Good yeah. To you, brother. Good Be God. safe out there. We love you, man. Everybody stay safe and enjoy the fucking ride. This is All Things Metal. <laughs>